It's Offside with Haas and McGuire. Hey, welcome to Offside with Haas and McGuire. I'm Haas. I'm McGuire. And uh, today... We're drinking. <laughs> you know, it's the little things that please him so much. <laughs> it's so true. Right? It's so a, true. We had a, a major celestial event today. Mm. Uh, okay, we had the, yep. uh, the solar eclipse. Yeah, of the okay. heart. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Now, here's the problem with the solar eclipse. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty, pretty big letdown. Yeah. It was for, for me. And, and, and I was saying to Kristen about this before. You know what? I remember being let down when I was younger, too. Like, yeah. when the last time it happened was, I guess, 79. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I remember it was like, yeah, you know. Um, I don't remember it then. And, didn't watch it now. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's cool. The lighting changes a little bit, but you know, you can accomplish that like with your fucking sepia on your fucking phone, right? Like you can change all that. So, so I, I don't know. It was, it was not the big event that everybody in the press made it out to be. They were going on. There was live coverage on TV. Oh, I know. Like you know, CTV. Graham Richardson is very serious. Very serious guy. Actually. Very serious. Yeah. Very serious guy. Yeah. And he was talking about this. It's a once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime experience. Except that I've had it twice myself. Yeah. Right. And there's going to be others. There'll be right? kids that There'll are alive right now. You know, 20, 20, 20, 44. That's the next one. Forty-four. Yeah, twenty years. Oh shit, like, that's nothing. Well, exactly. Yeah. Twenty years, I may even be able to. I'd like <laughs> with listen, given my health concerns, probably not. Yeah. But point I is, I don't think either one of us will be there. But there'll be lots of people. I could be there. I got twenty years left. <laughs> not you a know. hope in hell. <laughs> Neither you or me. <sighs> All right. Well, we're gonna start this episode with the. Uh, What'd you do this weekend? I, I think uh, fuck all. I know you did something exciting. Yes, I did. You're very happy. You were up in, in kind of my neck yeah. of the woods, the second neck of the woods. Yeah. It's not Sudbury. Yeah. It's the Gatnos. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where my, fam- my, my mother's family's from. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so they came and from she... Ireland and went up there. Okay. But then she met your dad and went to, your mom went to Sudbury. How did your mom get from so the Gatnos my to Sudbury? So my dad's from Nova Scotia. Oh, that's right too. Okay. Yeah. So my dad's from Nova Scotia. They met... In Venosta. Swear to God. No word of a lie. They met in Venosta. McLaughlin country. Oh, they're, re- they're related. You're like, you know that. Like, we're related. So, um, so they met in Venosta. Uh, my dad was up. He was, you know, young, whatever. And he, he had come to Ottawa because there was no work in, you know, Scotia back in those days. He would, they would go on the weekends. He'd, they'd go up to Venosta, right? And so my dad goes to the dance and he sees this girl, my mom, who had come with another guy, left with my dad, and then 50-some years later, they were buried together uh, on their 50th anniversary. Really? Yeah. You were in Lowe. I was in Lowe. You were in Lowe yeah. at, the, at, the big, at a big hockey tournament. Yeah. The, uh, I want to give a shout-out to Scott Mahoney, who's a cousin, first cousin of Steve McLaughlin. Okay. And, so and, uh, probably the other sides. I, I, I would assume. Yeah. Right, I guess. But uh, uh, he runs a... It's an annual... Um, yeah, men's tournament. Um, I, I want to say the age groups are 35 and over and 45 and over. I may have that wrong. Maybe 40 and over. Okay. But but uh, we were in the 40 category. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wasn't playing, but I was asked to go out and kind of just you know help out on the bench a little bit. I, I was telling the guys last night after they we won the tournament, uh, which is anytime you do anywhere anytime is just such an amazing experience. It's just 10 minutes into the first game, I was fully invested. Yeah. You know, I just absolutely, uh, I could have been back behind the bench with Rory, you know? Yeah. I, I, I just, I just felt like fully invested again. Bubba, Chris, yeah. who you know, basically put the team together. I will. So he talked to me about it. Yeah. And he said and he, that you were coming to coach. He yeah. said, why don't you come and coach as well? Yeah. And I said, no, nah, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know what I mean? I w- and I'm not up to playing. Yeah. But I said, do, I said, I, what I will do, and I didn't do this. I said, I was going to tell you to, to bench Bossick for me for a bit. <laughs> when Bossick was... takes so much grief. Todd takes so much grief. He wears it so well. I mean, the, the guy's basically like he's, 
He's got a patch on his shoulder from an injury. He's got this and that and the other thing. He's not had the seriousness that you have had right. health-wise. But he's had a number of, 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 of injuries that are that certainly restrict his hockey playing, not the least of which is he needs to lose some weight, and he knows that. He's lost a bit of weight. He has lost, yeah, he actually. He told me he's, he has lost, and he's going in the right direction. I told yeah. him to keep it up. Because this guy, yeah. I want to tell you, Quinn, you didn't know him back in the day. I knew him back in the day. And first of all, I don't care. I'll take him on my team anytime because I'll tell you what, he is a tough dude, man. Todd yeah. Bossett can throw him. Like, well, that's the biggest mistake anybody could make is think you got to walk over just because that guy isn't in shape or whatever. He's fucking tough. And I'd take him on my team anytime. And he took so much abuse from the guys. They, <laughs> oh, they just, well, he takes it left, right, and center. And he scored a beautiful goal oh, good. in the second game. Just a snapper. Yeah. And it right off the post and in. Yeah. And it, it was a beauty. But uh, it was four games, supposed to be five, but they had some rink problems. But Scotty got it all taken care of. That Gatineau Arena, great history there. You probably yeah. know well, if you've been you up know, there. No, but, not a lot, to be yeah. honest with you. Do you know where I pl- I actually played hockey uh, on the outdoor rink? Okay. Okay. Uh, in Venosta. Well, that's where that church. league was. Okay, oh, oh, really? Famous, famous yeah. national. Uh, in fact, Sports Illustrated wrote a story on it. Get out. Uh, Sports Illustrated did a story on the outdoor league yeah, from Lowe and, 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 uh, and, and Venosta and, and all those towns. Really? They played an outdoor league with five minute majors for fighting, full contact. And, and it was a story that Sports Illustrated picked up uh, 40 years ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. we used to. You we... had to have property or be from the town like or that? own property. Really? To play wow. on the team. Well, I could have done. Well, so, I mean, my grandparents. Like, I well, I probably would have qualified you. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm not sure. Scott would know. Stevie but would I know. Didn't, you know, so, but, so, but that, that's in the, in the former league. Yeah, well, you, yeah, yeah. yes. You, as soon as yeah. you mentioned, you played outdoors. Yeah, yeah. This league but was an was outdoor just on a, Like, we'd go up on the weekend. Oh, okay. You play some pickup or something. Pick up out, oh, okay, okay. Out, okay. Out, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't in a league or yeah. anything like that. I mean, I don't, Evan, if you ever played in Carp or not, but I mean, you know, the Carp Arena, they have a beautiful outdoor rink there. Yeah. Like, their, their house league teams would routinely in the winter, when we used to get a winter, would routinely practice out there. Like, they wow. would take the Zamboni out there. Hey, we never had, growing up in Coniston, we got our arena in 1972. Yeah. So that meant we were playing, before that, we were playing on the, on the outdoor rink. Wait, there was no was rink it. in Manitick till 75. Well, there you go. The I was in thing. Midget. Yeah. I, we, like, we had to play the Osgood Arena that had no artificial ice until I was in Pee Wee. Yeah. So we had to start in Kempville before because they had artificial ice. And then once the, the ice froze in Osgood, yeah. then you could come play in your hometown, your home Do you know area. that we were so poor, we didn't even have pucks? <laughs> we, had to pr- we had to play with bricks. That's we it. were so poor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Uh, okay. Anyway, shout out to Lowe. Shout out to Scotty in that tournament. Uh, if you get a chance, I don't know, Scotty, if you have an online presence or not, but I highly recommend it. So many yeah. adults still, so many guys like to still play. And uh, Well, maybe I'll make you know. the cut for next year's team. Well, to talk to this Bubba. This is going to be tough. It'll I'll tell you tough. what, we picked up this defenseman, um, Beaver. Doug Hume got hurt. Uh, first game couldn't play second game we picked up a guy as long as you played one of the first two games okay. it qualified you for Sunday Ben Casson I believe his name was he played Canada Valley Lasers played about four years of pro like when you're adding a guy like that to the lineup yeah he's 45 years old Chris like yeah he's you know yeah he's a young guy it's game changer yeah, yeah. it's a game changer putting a guy well, like that in the lineup, hey, listen you know? and I and I, I did notice that you have uh uh that guy Woody you know, Woody okay. and I played against him and he's a sweet hockey player Oh, he's, he's sweet. Deceptive. Sweet His shot is unreal. He scored eight goals in four games. Um, he, yeah. he, he, in fact, he was in on almost every goal we scored. Yeah, no, no, he's beautiful. Rocket was our next best forward. Yeah, and he's well, listen, 62. when Rocket's the next best forward, I know. What does that tell you? What you got? Right. right? Exactly. And he scored, of course, uh, almost every game as well. And was and uh, in particular game two, I told him, I don't know. Sometimes he just the, the fuel ignites. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was absolutely flying out there. We've yeah. all seen it. I know oh, you've yeah, seen yeah. it. Oh, oh, oh. But my God, yeah. was he flying in game two. He's probably our best forward, although Woody just right through just dominated. But, yeah. you know, it's just so many other guys chipped in. But it was, uh, uh, we, we had a tough team too. Yeah. Right? You just, you need to be able to handle when the shit goes a little sideways. I don't care what you're playing. It's going to happen. It's going to be a little pushing and shoving. At the end of the day, you've were, got were there the, any, were any fights? There was a fight in the tournament, but yeah, not, not, not in not uh, just one fight is yeah. all they had, which I think is a testament because you're up in an area, you know, in an area where 
you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not downtown Ottawa. Not to say people aren't tough in downtown Ottawa, but once you get into rurals, Pontiac area, the valley, that sort of town, these places, these towns, guys, guys, I think are a little bit more quick to maybe, to lose, you know, to lose oh, their temper. Absolutely. And so the fact there was only one fight, again, I think testament to how well it was organized and, yeah. and, and just, you know, pizza after the game. You could buy a case of beer at the, at the pub upstairs there, bring it right down to your room. You know, yeah. you could walk around in and out of the door holding a beer. There's no well, one there ready to write you a freaking ticket wow, if you're I drinking know. a pint in a but parking lot. But it is the province of Quebec That's where true. they've yeah. just made it illegal for smoking in daycares. Right? <laughs> but but they do have a smoking area for the kids. So a smoking area for the kids. Right. So there you go. it is anyway, you know. rambled on enough about it, but wanted to thank Bubba for asking me out and uh man oh man that was that was fun and we uh we lit it up large there. Oh that's good. There. Well I'm glad yeah. I'm glad you had a good time. It was uh, um yeah, yeah, again I I, I did nothing of, of any merit. But what I did do was I was following stuff. Okay, I was watching yep. hockey. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, what and, caught your eye? Well, it's funny. Uh, I was watching the Ottawa Senators. Yeah. Uh, game. New Jersey. Right? New Jersey game. Yeah. And um, so a couple things caught my eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Brady Kachuk. Yeah. Okay. Was NHL flying. record flying. Yeah. Okay. He was all over. He was, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, like it was a bit. Um, willy nilly, okay. But he was doing his best. He got a lot of he got a lot of opportunities. You know what I mean? He was he was just like throwing. You know what I mean? Leaving his feet every three seconds. You know what I mean? To hit somebody, okay. Now I I gotta say, and I know that you brought this up, something to talk about because at the end of the game, mm -hmm. right, with the with the empty uh, with the empty net, yeah. And Ottawa had some hit. They hit the post with a few seconds. Yeah, left. Pinto. I still can't you believe know, how that didn't go in. But you know, uh, it's just one of those a valiant things, comeback, right? but just too little, too late. Um, but then at the very end of the game, uh, a break breakaway onto the empty net. Time had run out, mm -hmm. and um, uh, sure. Oh, you what's that? He sure. He sure. He yeah. sure. I, yeah. Okay. Uh, he didn't shoot. He directed the puck. Yeah. Into the just net. guided. It okay. And yep. then and then Kachuk got a little pissy about that. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that particular situation? Well, first of all, Kachuk set an NHL record. I mean, yeah. that's that's uh, so that's to your right. to your point. Twenty six. Uh, sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Six, sixteen hits, most ever that since they started recording hits right. uh, about 27, 28 years ago, whatever it was uh, formally. And and that's just phenomenal. He yeah. also scored the goal to make it four three on a, just yeah. a just. I mean, he did all all of it yeah. himself. Uh, the guy I think is one of if if not I know they're going to miss the playoffs the seventh year in a row. But he's my favorite. I just love the guy. Yeah. Uh, tell me any team that wouldn't want that guy on the roster. No, absolutely. He's unfreaking exactly. believable. Yeah, he drags if need be, or he pulls, or he brings, or he pushes his team into the fight almost every single night. Now, what happened at the end, I want to mention it, of course, because of the hoopla surrounding uh, Ridley Gregg slap shot at the end of the net, yeah. which was unsportsmanlike, and Morgan Riley's reaction, which was even more unsportsmanlike, right. and rightfully so, uh, suspensionable, and it was. And he was suspended, and we all know, and everyone's got, as soon as the schedule comes out, we'll circle the date next year, because something will happen. It'll probably be... I don't think so. Oh, yeah, for sure there will. You think so? Oh, yeah, 100%. If nothing more than a Greg, Riley, Taffy poll, there'll be some sort of consternation will be in the game because of that. I'm almost willing to bet on it. And will it be it Rempe seem, McDermott? No. It doesn't <clears> seem <throat> like it's worth it. That doesn't matter. I think to the guys, it will. Riley came in and gave Greg a brutal cheap shot. Now, Greg yeah. did sell it a bit. And, and, you know, I think he also knew that he'd probably done wrong. But as he said many times, and we've already discussed this, yeah. you know, he got caught up in the moment. Fact yeah. is, here's sure. He's sure. Here's, here's Nico doing, doing an unsportsmanlike thing as well. And uh, I, was it, though? Directing the puck into the yes. net that, uh, after the whistle yes. was, not, it was not taking a shot. It was just, ah. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. He got a penalty for it too. The refs gave him a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. So not only did he do the wrong thing, but even by the letter of the pen, of the rule book, he he was penalized for it. So regardless of what you and I yeah. think, the NHL rule stipulates if you put the puck in the net after the, after time's expired, it's unsportsmanlike conduct right. 
by the rule of law, you get a penalty. Right. Now, Ridley Gregg didn't break any rule. He just, that's more of a moral code or a right. whatever you want to call it. However, to me, they're interchangeable, absolutely interchangeable. Sense fans crying because Riley ran at Gregg after all. Oh, oh, look at fun, Ridley Gregg taking that slap shot. That's so good. That's uh, way to go, Ridley. That was fun. Can't wait till he does it again, which he hasn't, and he never will. No. And meanwhile, here's your, oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, good God, God, get him. Yeah, that's brutal. That's terrible. Totally hypocritical. Well, of course. If, that's if, my comment. But here's the thing. If, are there actually people saying that it was totally hypocritical? Like, like or saying that? Yeah, like, you know what? It's a, you know what? Because here's the thing. I, here, I, it's the same percentage of the people who didn't enjoy the line brawl. So it's a small one. Yeah. You know what? I, I so to me, I just, I thought it was, eh. I, to be honest with you, I thought that uh, Kachuk should have just fucking left it and go. Like, you know. Be the bigger guy and fucking like walk away with your fucking great game and not taint it by losing your shit at the end. Well, that that there you go. I I I certainly don't think that would have been wrong. It had if the whole team had to just skated away, especially because he just guided it in. Like yeah, if, if it, it had been a couple seconds and he snapped it in or pulled yeah, a Ridley Gray, right? And he may have even had that on his mind. I think well, there's, I yeah. think there's a small chance he may have had that on his mind, and as he put the puck in the net and said, "Oh, they got quite a stir out of this when their guy did it. I'll just ease it in here." But he still, he was penalized for it, Chris. Yeah, and which, which day, I think was wrong. You know what? At the end of the day, come on. Well, it's it's in the rules. Yeah, yeah it's in, in the rules. You, yeah. You know what? There's a lot of things in the rules yeah. that are stupid. Well, I don't, you know, I don't but, have a problem with it because. But uh, he, here's the thing. The puck went into the net. Yeah. He guided it, but he did not shoot it into the net. No, I know. Right? So, I know. so to that, any, anyways, if there are people out there who were offended by his actions, this young man's actions on had he had, had a, having had a breakaway on an empty net, knowing that the time ran out and just sort of letting it go and letting it go into the net. Yeah. Which is kind of what I saw. You know what? If someone's offended by that, honest to God, yeah. you need fucking life. You need a life. Totally agree. But, uh, you know, at, at, at the same time, I'm not going to be a hypocrite myself here. God, when Brady reacted the way he did, I went, good. Good. Yeah, I didn't go, need go, to. Go, go he didn't out. need to. I mean, uh, well, no, he didn't. But I had no problem with it. So you're saying he did? Well, I, you know what? I think it tainted his whole game. At the end of the day, you know what? He could have said, you know what? If he said... What the fuck was that? Because we we could read lips, right? We yeah. know exactly. What he said. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know he didn't have to go at him so hard. He could have said, "What the fuck was that?" You know what? You know what? I, and, and I would agree with you. Had he got had he got a hold of him, and, and let's say he actually got some punches in or something, and it would, yeah. they would have needed a whole army to pull him off. Right. That's a very one sided altercation. It would have been Smith was trying to get involved right away. Right. Right on behalf of the Devils, and would have been an evener fight, but still, <laughs> Brady would have. Tuned him too, but at the end of the day, the fighting didn't happen. No, exactly, you know, it didn't happen. So I don't have a problem with it. I well, mean, we're gonna have to have Brady I'm a cold Kachuk guy. on to talk about. I'm, I'm a, who? We're gonna have to have Brady Kachuk on uh, to talk about. I brought him. I dropped him off uh, through a media area, uh, intermediary last year. A copy of the, 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 the my book, you know. Oh yeah, Goldie Goldthorpe, because Brady's dad's nickname is Reg Reg okay. Dunlap. Oh, is okay from Slapshot. That's their favorite movie of all time. The family all watched it as kids when the boys were probably six or seven. And, and uh, you know, Goldie, of course, you know, yeah. the whole story. So I drop it off and I haven't heard from the guy. So, uh, you know, I'd like to catch up what with him at some time. And by the way, Ridley Gregg, I yeah. want to try and get a book to him as well because his uncle is in the book. I mentioned his okay. name in, in the book. Bruce Gregg, who's passed away, died in a car accident tragically. But he at one time, he may still hold it, uh, the Canadian Masters uh, powerlifting uh, record. Really? For uh, deadlift and and uh, and squat, I, be really? I believe he deadlifted uh, almost a thousand pounds. Really? And and uh, I squatted, I think around seven hundred or something. I, I, my numbers may be off, but it's actually on YouTube. You can yeah. go on and see video of okay. Ridley Gregg's uncle okay. who played hockey with Goldie Goldthorpe. Okay. And the minors. So well, just another interesting connection of which there's so many. Yeah. That, well, in, in hockey. It's it, well. Here's the thing about it's not just hockey. It's Canada. There's yeah. actually only uh, 16 original families in Canada, and we're all, and the rest of us are related. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't look that up. I'm just gonna. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know really where to go with that. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just you know. 
But everybody's got some fucking connection to somebody else. Wow, you know there is. Mean? We're two degrees and, of separation. It's like the commercial. Like, you know Bob from Saskatoon? Yeah, man. <laughs> he seems to be my neighbor. Do you know what? Here's the thing, though. I've had that happen to me. Yeah. And someone has said to me, like, when I was in L.A. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I've had somebody say to me, okay, I know a guy up in whatever. And it's like, holy yeah. fuck, this is the stereotypical. Yeah. And I actually turned out. To know the to guy? know the guy. Oh, come on. No word of a really? lie. Yeah, no word of a lie. And uh, and it was like, you know, this does nothing at all for the Canadian stereotype. No, and no, for the Ameri- it and, and for the American ideal yeah. that, you know what I mean, that all Canadians are the same. Yeah. You know, you grew up in an igloo beside him type thing or so, you know. Absolutely. Well, yeah. here's the thing. I, Who's on okay? I would I would say I grew up in an igloo, but that would be cultural appropriation. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. you know what I mean. I did get yeah, ten seconds take back. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I'd have to I'd have to redo that. Yeah. But uh, okay, so, uh, so we very quickly. Good. Okay, you want to wrap that? No, no, no. Okay. What, are you gonna say no. something different? No, I got nothing different to say. Other yeah. than they're interchangeable, they're the exact same. So you got a problem with one, you got a problem with the other. Yeah. Don't be a hypocrite, auto offense. Okay. We should go out talk. We gotta mention about the brawl because you and I didn't talk. Well, that's why yeah. I was gonna move to it. It happened after I wrote about it and it got. So right, it happened like the two oh, nights did later. Did you see the guy with his panties in the knot on, on my thread? <laughs> you know what? I, I, no, no, I don't. I played in Europe. So I lost a lot of friends. Oh my god. So so here's the thing. I did not see what was on your thread. Yeah. Because I I don't have I don't I I'm not I don't sew. I guess that's what I'm trying oh. to say. Okay, I don't sew. I'm not on that stuff. But I did see it, and I was just, I figured that there'd be, you know, a, a bunch of things that, you know what I mean? And I know you wrote something up on, on Facebook. Was yeah, that, I, was I, that I, the I, thread you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. As, maybe I, I didn't catch it, but I, yeah. you know what? Well, why, anyway, would you, why would you bother reading down the thread? I wouldn't well, bother either. But I yeah, and, and I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not the greatest of followers yeah. of Liam McGuire. Okay. No big I fucking deal. see a lot. I just see you often enough. I figure you'd tell me if you had something important. Yeah. You'd tell me. Yeah. But but so here's the thing. I had absolutely no issue with that happening. Right. Okay. Of course not. People will say, "Oh, we hate the orchestrated fights." Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I, and I've heard other guys that I've talked to about it. Well, you know, it's the whole idea of it. You know, it was it was it was a setup. Yeah. Yeah. And so. okay. And and you know what? And it and I guess it set the tone, but but then they had a great game after that, eh? Oh the game was, was the fucking... game was awesome. And yeah. actually the, the next fight about ten minutes later was awesome as well. And then that was it. Yeah. And it was really there was nothing else. There was two penalties the rest of the game. They got everything out. But the fight the fight that was set up was set up specifically for a reason. Because Rempe turned down McDermott and when he ran Segelheimer or whatever his name was, got the penalty, got the suspension. Yeah, and and that you know McDermott was right there and he could have fought him and he didn't right. probably because Laviolette had said hey cool it kid you know you played nine games you got four fights like you yeah. know let's start piecemealing this a little bit yeah and and then so he turns down McDermott McDermott goes to the press says what he says they're both in the starting lineup I just happened to be on Twitter when about fifteen reporters from the game said Rempe starting uh, McDermott starting I couldn't race for the converter fast enough. And get it over there. Said, "Oh, they're going for sure." And then, which they did. And then everybody else decided to go too. However, they they haven't really. Have you seen or heard any real detailed explanations? I know Lazard, former Ottawa senator, was involved in the. They actually threw first. That's only because McDermott and Rempe took a little while to square up. Right. Lazard and and that guy were going right away, like instantly, instantly. Do you know what I I have ignored most of the shit talk about all that because yeah because i you know what i i didn't see it you know what i don't see anything wrong with something and you know i i you know it's funny because someone said to me uh we had an incident okay in men's men's hockey yeah and, and i was like ah, you know come on like it's okay that's you know part of the game and someone said you've been hanging out with liam too much <laughs> you should have seen okay. me in the 80s <laughs> when i was playing something like uh, the Sunday Night League of Magic and, and uh, Terry Murphy was slowly starting to yeah. take over. You know, Vince and, and Harold Stinson were, were kind of moving out, especially once the 30 and over started in 89. They they moved out of Terry. And uh, we, we'd have, let's call it a fight. Like, we'd have yeah. a fight okay. on Sunday night. It's Men's League hockey, so you're supposed to get suspended. 
And I wasn't really formally part of the executive, but I would sit in on a lot of these meetings as a guy with tenure in the right. league. You know, I was there in year one, blah, blah, blah. So um, I, I'd always say, guys, seriously, I mean, they didn't deserve more than double minors for roughing. <laughs> <laughs> Close up, yes. shots. Maybe double minor They should play. When do they next play each other? Yeah, <laughs> that'll be enough time. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. But so, so I, I'm guilty of thinking it's okay, right? So I, I don't even get involved with people who go on and on yeah. and say there's yeah. no place for it. You know, because there is. I, I know there. And as everyone's well aware, or anybody who knows, you know. I have I I have a temper at times. Yeah. On the ice. Yeah. <laughs> so it's and, Justin. Yeah. So so I, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be yeah, a hypocrite yeah, exactly. about yeah. about other people. Yeah. And I know that in the heat of the moment, sometimes you do some things and say some things or yeah. whatever that you may look back on and go, geez, well that was that that kind of made the situation worse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you know, so so that's the way, the way I say it. See about it. I, I find it fine if you're going to go as long as you know what I like the fact that they got back to just playing the hockey game though. That's what I. That's the if if it had been a shit show the whole time, which we'd see in the, which saw in the seven, which we saw in the seven, yeah. But yeah. it wasn't. They no. got back to playing the game. It was a good hard hard fought game. Yeah. But they they were they weren't looking at taking now. That being said. Um, you know, New Jersey was fighting at the time for a, uh, a you know yeah. playoff spot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, that's done now, pretty well, much. I know they're still yeah. mathematically in it, but yeah. they're kind of out. They're of hanging by a thread. Well, and so that will bring me to the next discussion point. Just one second. You, yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to finish off by saying that that guy was a clown on my thread. His comments when he brought in the fact that he played in Europe. And he had a bunch of friends, uh, trying to insinuate you had a bunch of friends that passed away from CTE or, or, or is that what you're trying to say to me? Like, well, from all the know, fighting that goes yeah, on in Europe. Yeah. You know, and because, or because he played oh. some hockey over there, I don't know where you played, what you were. And then he says, oh, say hi to your brother. Like, I don't know who the hell you are. Like, um, maybe a met, I don't know. Anyway. So who's the guy? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, anybody can see it. Doesn't matter. That's the only reason. I, I, I glad no, you, but I'm I, just wondering. As I'm far glad as... you said something right there, and I want to. I want to actually substantiate it because I'm the same way. I, I didn't. There was like the percentage of people who had a problem with that line ball was the minority. It was I the minority. Yeah. And no, it was for sure because okay. they they ran polls and all over the place right here in yeah. Ottawa and TSM 1200 ran one everything else overwhelming. I'm talking eighty percent, eighty yeah. eighty plus percent. Had no problem with it. So anybody who knows the difference between a puck and a basketball and is a true fan had no problem with it. If you know, if you're a little bit, you know, uh, uncertain about uh, physicality in your world, then you probably had a problem with it because guys threw dirty looks and some guys threw punches, and that probably scared the shit out of you. You hid under your bed for a couple days. But I mean, the rest of it is is yeah. just something that was totally normal. So I just want to say that in 1988, the NHL record okay. for fights in a season. Okay, 1988, 1,881 fights that season. Your Boston Bruins led the way. Yeah. With Jay Miller, Lyndon Byers, and company. Oh, Lyndon with, Byers. With 199 fights. Okay, the Bruins that season. Wow. Those are the two NHL records. This year, Chris, the NHL is on pace for 345 fights. Yeah. 1881 it's... to 345. And you got alpha males in their 20s. More equipment yeah. than ever before, situational, uh, you know, incident, yeah. and they got after it. And some people, like this crybaby on my thread, had to whine about it because McDermott and Rempe had it scheduled because of the history of the last game. It's, oh, no, it's no, such think... a lack of knowledge, of understanding why that fight needed to happen well, in a league where you can right. still fight. That's right. And 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 I'll say this now: I don't think. Rempy called him up and said, "Hey, so what are you wearing?" No. Right? Okay. I'm in the line, the starting line. Exactly. You but don't have to draw a map. They're exactly, but they're there for a reason. Get your shit taken care of, and they did. And let's move on. That's it. And that that was the and that that and in, in, in that aspect, that's why I I like it. So so yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. All right. Which moves us on to uh, the playoff race. Yeah. In the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Okay. Which is. 
uh, it's it's actually freaking exciting. I'm excited about how it's how in the last two weeks, I have twelve days left. Yeah. Right? The last twelve days of this regular season yeah. is going to play out. Yeah. For four teams yeah. that are fighting it out for one uh, spot. Well, two spots really. Well, one, Tampa, Tampa is almost free and clear, really. No, no, no. Okay, so yeah, yeah no, exactly. But no, no. The the spots are there's uh, second wild card, the second wild, the yeah. first two wild cards, and the last spot in the metropolitan division. So that net division, which right now, oh, yeah, right. So there's there's two wild cards, yeah. which Detroit is in the uh, in the running for, which Philly. Uh, uh, Washington Capitals, Pittsburgh Penguins, yeah. and the Islanders. Yeah, five teams. Yeah, fighting for those spots because yeah. because the, the I don't even somebody will finish third in the Metro and someone's going to get the first wild card spot and it's going to come from the Metro. So uh, no, it's not. No, Ta it, Tampa could win out, out of the Atlantic and, and no, no. So so Tan no. So Tampa. Is already in. Yeah. Uh, with uh, I'm. I'm. Well, they're four points back in the Leafs, so you're. They're in, really. They're in. Exactly. They're, they're not catching the Leafs, I don't think. No, no, no. But could. they're they're in the third spot. They're in the. They're in the first wild card spot. No, no. The the Tampa's in the. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's you're right. Tampa's yeah, by, in, in, in the first. They're, they're in the first wild card yeah. by by far. Yeah, like, they're by they're far. not missing the playoffs right. now. Yeah, I, I they, they, yeah. I well, I think it's probably clinched. Hmm. It's got to be. Actually, yeah, I think it is, actually. Okay. Yeah. So they're in that. So, so we're positive, talking so. about, two. we're talking one spot yeah. in the Metropolitan Division. Yeah. And we're talking one spot That's in it. that, in, in the wild, wild card. card. The second wild Wait, card. the second wild card. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So you've got five teams yeah. fighting for that. Yes. The thing is, and, and not, not really, because Detroit can only, in, can only win the wild card. Right. That's right. Yeah. But... They are at, like they're all at the same level. Oh yeah, they're all right they're, there. They're all they all have like eighty three points. This, this is, that's exactly what they have. This isn't anything new. Right? We uh, we've had races that I mean there, there's been playoff spots that have been decided in overtime, regular season overtime. Really? Yeah. I mean uh, the first time New Jersey Devils when they beat Chicago in overtime and John McClain goal scored on Darren Pang at eighty eight and then the Devils went all the way you know to the semifinal. With uh, Sean Burke, I believe, and and uh, and and company, young Kirk Muller, and and it was uh, that's the game where uh, Jim Schoenfeld uh, called out Koharski, have another oh. donut, you donut you found <laughs> oh, no. in, in in that series, and the replacement refs had to come out, and and uh, with the yellow sweaters, all that happened in that year '88, okay. and it, and they only got in there because of a of a goal in overtime in the last regular season game. So by John McClain. So you know we've seen races not the before. John McClain. From not not, Die from, Hard? not from Die Hard. Okay, no Just different spelling shit. as well. <laughs> but but, uh, but that is one of that is the greatest Christmas movie ever. <laughs> Absolutely. We're not even going to get into that discussion because it is. We both agree. <laughs> we both agree. It's a Christmas, it's a yeah. Christmas movie. Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, yeah, the playoff race, like you said, um, I mean, Nashville and Vegas holding down the spots in the West. Uh, Probably look pretty secure, I'd say. Well, you know what? Point, it, so yeah, and 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 I just some jockeying for positions there could still happen. But even a, even that separation has really taken. Oh, hold. because LA is in the mix. LA is in the mix too. Yeah, and uh, I, you know what? So the West is not completely settled, but no, no, but but I will say this. But it the pretty, West, but it pretty much the West is, is going to win the cup. Like I like there, those that 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 probably that list of teams. Yeah. That are going to the playoffs in the West, yeah, are just like some powerhouses. I know, right? I know. Yeah, powerhouses. And but in yeah. the East, though, and this is what I want, and this is what I said, and I want to go back, and, and I I'm not going to go back and find the footage, but I'm going to say, I said that Sidney Crosby was going to have a great year. Okay. Yeah. He's had a great year. Yeah. Okay. And I still think they're making the playoffs. I said at the beginning of the season. They're making the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. And I also will continue to say that. And I'm going to add, they're going to make it past the first round. They're not winning the cup, but they're making. So it you're past the first saying round. they're they would beat either the Rangers or the Bruins. They're going to they're going to beat they're going to beat the Rangers because they're going to have that second. They're going to have the the other. Yeah. Um, uh, they're going to have that last spot. Yeah, I can't remember what the difference in points is between the Rangers and the Bruins right now for first in the conference. Well, the, yeah, I don't, whoever I first don't in the know. conference plays last. In that's the right, plays the last. 
And then the second plays the second one. That's right. That's right. So, and that's who that and that's the spot. It could be Pittsburgh Boston. It could be. No, I, I think it's New York Rangers. I think it's 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 gonna be the last spot. Is that New York Rangers? No, but no, no. no. I, I that's my speculation. Okay, I got you. I fair I just, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, listen, uh, I don't remember you saying that, you probably did. I know for a fact I did not. Right. I went against that. I did not think Pittsburgh would make it. I did not think Washington would make it. I did not think either one of them would be hanging around looking available here yeah. right now. And frankly, the Penguins at 6-2-2 two, and two in their last 10 are the only ones really that look like they're playing to get in. Everybody yeah. else, Detroit, Washington, the Islanders, everybody else is shitting the bed. Like they went on win streaks to kind of yeah. elevate them in there. Right. <clears throat> and now they're under 500 in the last yeah. 10. Detroit. And Washington are like three, five, and two, two, six, and two. Well, this, I think you, you know, know what? I'm, that's what I'm saying. Pittsburgh's peaking at the right time. Yeah, they have Thanks the horses. They have the horses. Okay. If well, they can get if they can get the but performance. They, tra- they, 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 they were selling the trade deadline. I know. Like, and they're gonna. You know what? And they're. If going, you move Gensel, are you kidding gonna, me right they're now? They're gonna regret that trade. Oh, they're regretting it now. And Sidney sure. Crosby's pissed about that. Yeah. Thing. I think one of the reasons why he's fucking dragging them into the playoffs yeah. is as a fuck you. Unless, yeah. I told you not to trade show him. You what we can do. I Imagine told you not to trade him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, but I see. We'll uh, see. You know, Detroit now holds the hammer. If they win out, which I mean, five straight wins, then no, you can't catch them. They hold the hammer. They have a game well, in no. hand. Yeah, they do. So they, right, they, but yeah, they, 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 they're the same. They're the same. same level no, no, don't no, they? Detroit's in right now in that wild card spot. In the wild card spot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If but, they win, out. They, are they not? Do they not have eighty three points as well? Or do they have eighty four? They must have. They points. have one more, and they have a game in hand, so they control their. No, they have one more point. They have one, one more, more point. point, so you can't catch them if they win out. Right. If they okay, win out, you can't catch. Okay, them. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So they they control their destiny, albeit but they don't. Win in five but they don't general. control the destiny of the metropolitan last position. No, they no they don't. Right? No. And that that is between right now Islanders, the uh, the Penguins, mm-hmm. the uh, Washington, the Caps, and Philly. That's right. All four. Philly is another team falling right off a cliff. But but all three right have the, the ability now. Um, so someone someone said to me. He said, uh, what do you think about how Patrick Waugh is doing as the coach of the Islanders? Yeah. Um, and I said, well, I, I don't know. I, I hadn't really considered it. I mean, I, you know what I mean? It's been kind of, uh, you know, it hasn't been, um, what do you call that? It hasn't been newsworthy yeah. in, my, in my mind. But he, he proceeded to say, no, no, they've actually done far better, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Which, which leads me to a discussion. Okay, about the Jack Adams trophy, and then we'll move on to some other trophies. Sure. Okay, so I think we could all agree that the Jack Adams trophy is likely going to a team that did not make the playoffs last year and finished first overall this year, the Vancouver Canucks. Rick Tonkin is, I think he's the strong favorite. Yeah, uh, for the Jack Adams, uh, Montgomery won it for your Bruins last year. Yeah, and and uh, you, would I, you agree? I think Montgomery definitely agreed for last year, and I think Rick Tockett would probably, if I had a vote, would probably be my vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I was thinking. I, I think now, it's a great. I, I have learned that the uh, the the Vegas odds yeah. on Tockett yeah. are. Uh, <laughs> Did you check with Janet Gretzky? <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Exactly. The Vegas odds on Tarkin are, are pretty are pretty good. Uh, that that he's he's favored. He's favored. I I like that uh, choice by you. Yeah. I think that's an excellent choice, and and I think that he should win it, and I believe he will. Okay. So now I'm going to move to the Norris Trophy. Yeah. Okay. Well, well that's going to be the most. Uh, so he that's, is that's next gonna... to the Art Ross, which will be decided by themselves. That's right. This one here by a vote will probably be. I don't know. I have so, to research. So, so here's the for. thing. So, I'm I'm saying that the leading candidates are um, Vancouver Hughes. Yeah, Quinn. Um, Kale McCarr. Kale McCarr. Yeah. Okay, in in Colorado. There's your okay. One too. Yeah. And you know, someone who I had not even considered. Okay. Uh, but I've been watching him in the pool. It's one of two guys. Okay. Who? Either Yossi or Bouchard. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so. My thought was Bouchard has like I, he's blown me away. Yeah, because he was one of those uh, 
picks that guys made that has surprised the whole hockey pool. Yeah. Right? Okay. But then I... Boosh bomb. You know, but then I, I think, you know, Yossi has done so much with a shit team. The Preds are, have not performed the way certainly any of those other teams. Like Edmonton, performed. they went on a run, right? And yeah. they set a club record. Right, most uh, most consecutive games or at least a point that got them in. Just like Edmonton's sixteen game winning streak got them into the throes of the competition and back into the playoff race comfortably, which they have more than maintained. And Nashville, it looks like now, will probably do enough too. So, but 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 Yossi will obviously got no chance to win the Norris. Yeah, no, no, but he that that those are the the top four. Yeah. So so my question is this now, I'm going to say that. Um, the favorite, okay, because it's voted by the, the journalists, right? Yeah, Norris, the Norris is the journalist. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say Quinn gets the nod. Yes. Okay. He will. Okay. Quinn Hughes will win the Norris Trophy. I agree. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, we're, okay. So, we can, we're, we agree. So, we're yeah. moving, Okay. So, now we're moving on yeah. to the... Um, uh, there's only really one other one. I'm forgetting. Really? Oh, well, no. Yeah. There's two other ones. Well, I mean... Okay. There's, there's uh, a bunch of other trophies. Yeah, there are. But well, I think there's only really one that you want to have that you would want to spend any time discussing. Really, the hard rock one. No, because oh, of the, oh yeah, because <clears throat> not so much discussing that because they'll they'll solve that themselves. Right. We can say what we want. Yeah. But I mean, the heart trophy. The heart trophy. The heart trophy is really because there's so many. To your point that you just made about Yossi and Nashville, there's been discussion. I heard it on the radio today too. Guys talking about it. What if Sidney Crosby? Because it's largely been done on his back. Yeah, you know, what if he gets the Penguins in? Is that enough for him? Is he because the Hart Trophy, the by the is language, the most valuable player to the team, right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So does he deserve some votes? And yeah, he does. What about Kucherov? With the point difference between him and Braden Point, yeah, uh, is is so significant. We haven't seen anything like this since the Gretzky days, really. Right. To this degree, he's over fifty points ahead of Brady Point. He's he's he could quite well, probably will. Let's uh, we I've written him off, <laughs> just you know, just like I wrote off Pittsburgh, and yeah. he could win the the Art Ross. He right. definitely would be a favorite for the heart. Right. McKinnon is six points shy of breaking the franchise record or tying it with with uh, set by Peter Stashny. Okay. Of one hundred thirty nine points, he could score fifty. He probably will. He's at forty eight. He's never done that before. He become the sixth franchise player to do that. I mean, he, he's got his accolades. Connor, I mean, at one point, Chris, yeah. he was 110th in scoring. Oh no, no, absolutely, 110th, and they were in last place. Yeah, in the league. I mean, he and that team shot up like a rocket yeah. on his shoulders. Absolutely. To me, he is the most valuable player in hockey in the world. Period. But I don't think he's going to win the Hart Trophy. No, I, I don't think so either. I think it'll go to Kucherov. You know, if the votes well, today, you gotta remember, uh, McGregor's got six games to go. Yeah. McKinnon's got four, and Kucherov has five. As we tape this right now, so I'm going to say that McKinnon is more valuable to Colorado than Kucherov is to Tampa. Okay. How in God's name well, could you say that? Because of the two-way nature of his game. Uh, Kucherov is an is is an offensive force, but he is not the defensive player, and which is why I will I will vote Sidney Crosby over Kucherov. Not I'm, I'm not just talking about numbers. I'm talking about most value to the team, and 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 that's why. And McKinnon, I think this has year you're, you're you're you would be in the minority. On, oh, on that one. I know. I'm just giving my you're justification for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, just being a two way game to me wouldn't justify. Uh, Voting him over Kucherov. This yeah, but year listen, for the they're, what, are, what are they right now? Two points out from each other. Three, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so three points out from each other. We're talking, we're talking a minuscule amount here. But that's of, not of why I'm saying they are Ross Trophy winners should not necessarily automatically. Oh no, no. I, well, is and, and what he's done in offense. He's been in on I don't know what percentage of offense for Tampa Bay this year. The only reason they're hanging around looking available is because of him. Oh, right. Surgachev has been out. I see he's back skating today in non-contact jersey. You could get him back for the playoffs. What an addition he would be because they've played with well, the old guard. Eh, what's yeah, you're telling me that there's a guy who's been on long-term injured reserve yeah. who might come back for the playoffs? For Tampa. <laughs> for Tampa. <laughs> I know, folks. No, it's, it's, this never happens. Yeah, it's, Except it's, with them, it always does. 
And what are we going to see with Mark Stone in Vegas? Everybody's waiting to see about that uh, laceration, whatever it is. Spleen. And, uh, uh, yeah, splenectomy. Yeah, yeah, splenectomy, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'd say right now, Quinn Hughes has the edge for the Norris. Uh, I think uh, talk it and a walk for the Adams. I, I, uh, I'm praying like hell McDavid can find some magic and overtake to get an Art Ross. I don't think that Kucherov has surprised me, got to be honest. Cards on the table, he has surprised me. I do think if he goes on to win the heart, I think he will be an automatic for the heart. I, I think he'll win the heart just because of the discrepancy of points on the team. Yeah. It's just too substantial. Yeah. It's just too substantial. Well, now when do they vote this? That, that'll, they, the vote's taken literally right at the end of the season. Just the it's end just, of the it's season. It's not made so it public doesn't, until. It does not have any... Uh, there's, there's no, no playoff, no input playoff input 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 we went we to Florida thanks to a sponsor. Why not Vegas? That's right. You know. So who wants to be our All Star? Uh, what do you call that? Uh, NHL Awards. NHL Awards. NHL Awards sponsor. Uh, please send us some. Uh, money. How many days would we need in Vegas? Do you think? Well, you need three days. You need three. You need days. three days because first of all, the first day you're going to be jet lagged, right? Uh, and I've never experienced jet lag. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. But here's the th yeah. Okay. You're not normal. That's the real the <laughs> idea. Like, you've never <laughs> experienced a hangover either, from what my from my recollection. And believe okay. me, folks, if I don't have a hangover today, I will never have one. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so you gotta you have to be there uh, a full day ahead. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I get a full day of doing stuff ahead of time before the event. Then there's the day of the event. Then yeah. there's the day after the event. So, right. you, need, so you need three days three there, days. Yeah. but four of them there, there, but travel night or something. Well, that that night it would be expensive, but yeah. you can get you know. Listen, if you don't mind risking uh, being in a, an implosion, yeah. you can stay at the Tropicana. Oh, perfect. No, we won't stay at the Trop. Uh, I I've stayed at the Trop. I used to stay at the Trop way back. Yeah. When the Tropicana pool was when the you, place. Those guys played there. Or? Well, you know what? No. Yeah. Well, I, I've told you the story how I missed Dean Martin. I think you did. By one night. With me, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, anyhow, the, uh, uh, there, are, there are decent hotels to stay at. I, I personally have gravitated down to Fremont. Uh, downtown, no, no, yeah. and, and staying at like the Nugget or yeah. one of the one of the downtown hotels, it's a, it's a little more age appropriate. Okay, uh, no, no, because the strip has become for the young twenty, like you know, these are the one, these are the the, the fucking idiots. Okay, oh, to be honest with you, kid, yeah. they go down there, they're coming from LA, and they're trying to be really cool, right? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna order bottle service for two thousand dollars for a fucking bottle of vodka. Like, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll stop at the liquor store. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm still love, I'm still from Sudbury, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up my Gatorade bottle. Yeah. Okay. Put a little, little lemonade in there, and I got vodka and lemonade for the night. I'm all right. Perfect. Okay. Plus, you're downtown on Fremont, and you're gonna walk around freely with all your drinks from one place to the yeah. other. They got bands. I, I, I'll tell you. And my favorite restaurant is Oscar's, which is uh, at the Plaza. Not the nicest hotel, but it's the one of the best steakhouses in all of Las Vegas. Yeah? Okay. No, hun, honey. <laughs> there we go. That's is Oscar's. that where that was? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This is, uh, oh, your, uh, this the is Grace's, this Grace's, is Grace's, yeah. Chris's this daughter's is, wedding. Yeah, in Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah, we, we flew everybody to Vegas. And this is the, uh, I guess that's it. This is the un un underside of the, uh, of the dome. It's a, it's a glass dome. Anyways, but the point is, well, they is I love. They look good there. They, well, they, you know what? It's, I, if you don't look good on your wedding day. Yeah. Do you know enough. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I'll take it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just throw it over there. Very nice, by the way. Justin and Grace. Um, He's a good guy. He is a good guy. He's yeah. a good kid. I've met him. Uh, I like him. I, I've told you what happened. We did it. So we have, I don't have it where I'm not wearing it, but I, I, they got me when I had my first heart yeah. incident. Yeah. 
they got me an Apple Watch so I could monitor my heart yeah, rate and yeah. all that stuff. And so he said, well, we're going to do it. We, you can match up with people, right? And do like a fitness challenge. Okay. okay? Where, okay, if someone's doing it, you know, oh, so-and-so is working out. Yeah. Right? Uh, I didn't need to know that he was doing an aerobic workout at 1.30 a.m. <laughs> Yes, Scott. It's, it's like, uh, well, no, no, I'm kicking. I know you're married, but take take the watch off. I don't need I don't need notification that you are working up a sweat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know. So uh, I get rid of those calories somehow. I, I will tell you this though. I, I, I can, oh, that's just classic. It's, it's, but it's just it's it's. What do you call that when a father should not TMI? Yeah, too yeah. much, way too yeah. much information. You know what yeah. we should do right now? Something. We should introduce. Yeah. Our um, our final, yeah, uh, shooting the shot. Yes, interview. Yeah, with um, Marionville. Yeah, no, okay. Marvelville. Marvelville, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. What's Marionville? Is that your town? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Okay, it's near right. Okay, Marvelville. Right here, right Mar Marvelville, Ontario, native. About a six pint trip from here. Okay, uh, six pints to Marionville. Yeah, not to Marvelville. No, that's fine. Five, <laughs> Jesus! Yeah, it's about a six-minute drive. <laughs> um, so um, you know, we always say Metcalf, but it's Marvel. Though. Well, the arena is named after the Metcalf. That's he, right. He was born in the Winchester Hospital. Yeah. So you get some people who don't know the area. Say, "Oh, Larry Robinson's from Winchester." Or uh, you know, like that. Yeah. And and uh, but he, yeah, he grew He's up in Marbleville. The arena is named after him in Metcalf. He played That's junior right. B in Metcalf before yeah. he went to Brockville, before he went to Peterborough, before he went to Nova Scotia, and then ended up in the Montreal Canadiens. That's right. Yeah. So it was a uh, now this yeah. fella wore uh, number uh, number nineteen. He did. Okay. He did. Uh, Larry, the Big Bird. The Big Bird Robinson. And, and uh, it, what's funny is that he had his bo boat named Big Bird. Yeah. Okay. I, I t I've told you the story. And, yeah. and when we, when we bumped, I, I said, you know, we've actually met. I don't know if you remember. You know, I, and I figured you wouldn't remember. But I said, listen, we met one time and I told him exactly where it was uh, at the locks. He goes, oh, yeah. I was, I was with Rick Green that time. Do you remember that? I remember him saying that. Yeah. yeah. He goes, yeah, I was with Rick Green that time. I think, yeah. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, super nice guy. I mean, they don't come any nicer. You know what? I I I'll be honest with you, I, and I have been shocked at how awesome everybody, everybody has been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially the fucking Montreal Canadian guys. No. <laughs> no even, I had somebody somebody sent me a note saying that they loved the Steve Shuck interview. Yeah. They thought it was great. And and Steve is very laid back, eh? Like he was. Oh yeah. He had listen. He had just finished a round. Yeah. He had just. Finished and he also a golfed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was in. He was. He was feeling no pain. Yeah. Right. Uh, but it was a very relaxed interview. And and with Larry, we were in. Unfortunately, we were in a loud restaurant. So we apologize yeah. for the sound. Uh, we were planning on going. We got hit with uh, horrible weather, which. Yeah. Uh, kick off where we were supposed to go uh and then we ended up trying to make it make it work so one of these days we'll actually have another interview with larry hopefully we will okay he's and home now in the summers we well he does well, he's, and he's got a boat uh, yeah. down on the same avid golfer now you're an avid golfer i golf and yeah he loves to golf tell you what you me him and mobile play Rito there that, that's perfect there you go it's all set yeah we'll, uh, do, we'll do the interview with Rito even better yeah yeah there you go i'm in and and we can talk about so one of the things we didn't discuss this uh, with him, but uh, when he left and he went, you know, he sort of was traveled around, ended up with the Los Angeles Kings. Yeah. Right. Okay. So he goes to Los Angeles, but there's already a number nineteen in L.A. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. Okay. Fella, I know. Yeah. Jimmy Fox. That's right. And Jimmy Fox, who was a Regular, I mean, he was a 30 goal scorer in yeah. uh, in, in LA, and he was a you know, solid player. He was, you know, uh, gives up his number 19 without even being asked. I know, without wow. even being asked, gave it up and said, Larry Robinson's number 19. Yeah, right. Um, uh, you know, like again, 
guys showing how they're great guys. And, yeah. I, and I have no doubt about Jimmy Fox because I remember him from being a kid, okay? Uh, you know what I mean? And I know him and I know the family and, 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 and that whole thing, okay? Uh, Larry Robinson, I didn't know. Blown away by how down to earth he was. Uh, his brother, Mo, who, to my understanding, I've never played with him, but was and still is a uh, force on the ice. Uh, I don't know if he plays anymore, uh, but he was he, up until I a few think years he's ago. he's just, a, I believe he's probably done. He's done <clears throat> for the alumni. He played many, 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 many games yeah. for the alumni. He played seven years pro. Yeah. Uh, he did get in one game with the Montreal Canadiens. It was a, a very famous night. It was Tuxedo Night in Winnipeg. And uh, he played a game with his brother Larry. So, you know, pretty freaking cool. And, yeah. um yeah, he wore number two, I believe. Really? And um, he just played the one game. But he played the Myers. He was tough as nails himself. Obviously, you know, it doesn't uh, necessarily translate. Wayne's brothers, that, yeah. Yeah, Wayne had two brothers that played. Yeah. Kratzky uh, that, that played. And, and Brent had a cup of coffee in the NHL. Keith never made it. Played the Myers. They both did. Yeah. Had, had excellent seasons. Has, has did Mo. He was yeah. a solid competitor. Yeah. Well, um, and lives a stone throw. Yeah, There's a stone yeah, he's not so, he's not far from us. Far and, from and Larry comes home in the summer. And yeah, sisters here. Yeah, here well, and, and you know what? Area, and so. this is the thing that was it was nice about it. The fa it was a family. Uh, it was a family interview. Oh yeah, we had it was a uh, family interview. Brother in laws there, J Jonesy. Yeah. yeah, Jonesy and uh, Mo. They were they, they, they were great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so uh, you know what? Larry's Larry, son was there. Larry's son was there. Yeah. Jeff. We should we should actually. Uh, we could we could interview Mo Robinson too. Oh, easily. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you know, uh, as, as for next year, as we move forward, and should we uh, should we uh, get you know, renewed sponsorship from our our current sponsor, which we have not mentioned, which is the Patterson Group of Golf Courses, yeah. big the time, Emerald yes. Links, uh, Cloverdale Links, and Anderson Links. Yeah. Okay. So we do have to uh, thank you for that sponsor who made all of this. Uh, possible and, and and we want to continue that so um, we will uh, you know we'll be we'll be on the phone or sorry or Liam will be anyway <laughs> oh I love going to see you him know, okay. I'll be coming to see him but uh, this is our last interview right this is our last yeah, interview so yeah. This, yeah so that's uh, for now and, and, for, for now but yeah for and now. so we have many season, many many in the well, hopper this regular season is over and so what we're going to, uh, because I'm one, going to Alaska, you're going to, and I'm going to Ireland and you're going to Ireland. So, but what we, we will have one final episode. We'll yeah. talk about that later, but yeah. we'll have one final episode, uh, at the end of the season, April 19th, we're going to film it. Okay. okay. I, I get home the 19th. So that's why we're filming it on the 19th. Okay. Not sure when I arrive, but I don't <laughs> give a fuck when you arrive. Okay. <laughs> you are we we on a plane. Because I'm leaving on a jet plane. Uh, the, on the twenty uh, second. Yeah, so we got time. Okay. I'm, yeah, like, right. I'm definitely home. To, I'm definitely available. Yeah, but on I got the twentieth and the twenty first. I got editing to do, man. Like, there's this. This That's is right. I just don't know if I can physically do it the nineteenth. But I will you do, do my it. Best. Listen, I can if it's in the middle of the night or something. Yeah, well, I don't care. What okay, I don't care either. Yeah. I mean, we can drink anytime. I don't yeah, care. it's not like you have. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so, so we are. We're, that's our plan: is to film on April nineteenth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the final episode of the season, and then we will do playoffs, the playoff things, yeah. the, the playoff things as we move forward. Uh, and Michael and I was at, I was actually we we're talking about this, and eventually we will get to this interview. <laughs> but I was at the mill, right, and and I and we talked about doing this before, uh, and I think it was during the the World Juniors we were going to do a, an episode uh, from there, from the mill. Upstairs, we, yeah, I believe so. We 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 should do it. We should better do it. Do a playoff game. We should we can do a playoff game from yep. there, um, and that way we can have you know I mean and, and we can have an a live audience. No, well, we'll do it there, okay. or and Lee we can McGuire's. do live when, you when, know or or Liam McGuire's. I may mean, want to go there. I mean, if the mill gives us some money, then yeah, we'll go there. If they don't, well, we'll go to the place that has my name on it. All right, you know? it sounds like a plan. Yeah, okay. would you start working on that? I can work on that. Okay. That's you not, I don't that. have to, that's, that's a done deal. We can do it. Um, they'll, they will not say no at least. We can do it. But, you know, if you want to talk from a sponsorship point of view, I don't know. Yeah. Well, if we do, I mean, you listen, I don't mind. The mill would give us anything either. But. Well, here's the thing. I, I get good treatment at the mill. Like, I, I love walking in. So do I. Okay. Uh, and, it's, uh, and, and I don't get the norm treatment, right? It's like, hey, norm, you know, I don't get that. But Kelly 
if she's working yeah. or you know, and or, she or, knows or, what you drink. You know what? They bring me what I drink, Me come too. in, and yeah. you know what I mean. And they're awesome there. And it's then I'll, I'll say, and so I we were there the other night, Kristen and I, just not anything related, just us going out to the pub to something. And uh, I had gone to the head, and Kristen was going to order, so she's. You went to Kevin Jardine. Yeah, sorry, it's my navy thing. I went to the I went to the men's room. Yeah. Okay. So I go to the men's room and I go gone, but Kelly came by and Kristen ordered. Yeah. Right. And Kristen did not know what kind of wings to order. Right. And Kelly goes, "Don't worry, I got it." <laughs> so you know what I mean? Because there's all the flavors, right? Of you know what I mean? Yeah. And she goes, "No, no, I know, I know what he likes." Yeah. And so, uh, so anyway, that that's a local and a half. They have, they have captured the, uh, they're the pulse of the village. Oh, and you know what? I got to tell you, and we, so the last time Kristen was. Black Dog's pretty good too. Black Dog's very good, but it's better. At, it's it's higher tea. cuisine. I like tea too. It is higher cuisine. Oh yeah. Oh, well, you know what? Tea's, no. tea's a good guy too. Yeah. I'll tell you, tea is a. Uh, I think there's tea. nine licensed establishments in Manhattan, but you and I should go on a pub crawl. We could do that, except I couldn't keep up. Oh, I mean, just, 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 just sip on one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this, uh, with a sippy cup. I'll have a straw. One yeah. of those ones. Uh, you see, can you imagine how much fun that would be? Because well, we know okay. people everywhere. So we have to start. So we have to start at the Legion. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to start at the Legion. Yeah, because that's where I got my start. Yeah, was the Legion. I've let's, told let's you this. Let's do it. So we started. At... All right, we can do that. Maybe that'll be it's our... only nine drinks. Eh? It's only nine drinks, minimum. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Minimum. Just, just, but it, incidentally. We couldn't leave any place, okay? Because it's just one more quick one, and then we'll go. And then a slow down. Just this, and then a slow down. One more quick one, then and I gotta go. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, then it's, it's just the like, infamous slow Kevin Jardine slowdown. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so, uh, okay. Well, that sounds like a plan. All right. We could do we'll something. File like that. Away, but, uh, we'll file out away, but file out away. We could, you know, what we could be probably fun. do. We could do a. Um, we'll just walk. A pub? Oh yeah, well, yeah, Walking. absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, so so well, let's talk about which ones we do. We, so we got the we Legion. Name them all. I think there's nine. Okay, so there's the Legion. Legion. Are we talking the restaurants too, or not? every place that serves alcohol, we should go in and have a drink. <sighs> At some That's point, a lot more. Meal. That's a lot more. No, it's not. It's only nine. I think. Okay, so if we start at the Legion, yeah. then we go to the Muse, and there's the what Italian restaurant there. Yeah, Babos right? or whatever. Babos, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we'd have to go uh, two. to the other Italian restaurant. Well, the Chinese food place serves too. Do they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, they do. Yeah. That's right. That, yeah. that should be, we should zigzag across the parking lot. Yeah, we'll there. cut across the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. And then make our way back. That's three. That's three. Yeah. Okay. Then we got to go to the other Italian restaurant that's in the uh, courtyard there. What's it called now? Oh, well, it's uh, not. It, yeah, it's not La Piazza it's not, anymore. It's, it's not La Piazza. Piazza anymore. Angelina's. Angelina's. Yeah, and they got a nice little bar area in there. They do. Yeah, yeah. probably have two there. So there's four. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then we got. Uh, we'll go to Creekside. Creekside for okay. sure. Okay, that's five. And we should time it so that you can meet John Cronk. I've met John Cronk a long oh, yeah, time he did ago. Your know, yeah, 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 I know John Cronk. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe Dave Gray and Wayne Boardman or some of the other guys. So that's why. Listen, I will tell you this, though. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a John Cronk story. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm overhearing somebody talk about uh, <laughs> John and his position yes. at the bar yeah. the other night. Yeah. Okay. Someone was talking. Someone I didn't even know. Sits in the know. same seat every time. Yeah. I didn't even know, but they're telling, talking about this guy at the, you know, and I knew exactly who they were talking about at that. So uh, okay. That's so, five. That's five. No, no, that's that's five. That's five. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Hang on. Legion. Legion. Babos. Babos. Chinese, Chinese food three. restaurant. Angelina's, Angelina's four. Creekside Side five. Okay. Hang on. So then we go to the Black Dog. Yeah. Six. Okay. Then we're gonna go across the street to tea to the vault. Yeah, seven. Okay, that's seven. Yeah. Then we'll end at the mill. That's eight. That's eight. Okay. So that's eight, not seven. I said nine. Oh, eight, nine. Okay, what's the what? What's the nine? I'm just wondering. Are we missing something? Uh, this is probably making really good podcasts right now. But is there not? Uh, you know that little spot if you turn down into the Muse, that not Vietnamese place? Yeah. I don't they know. They serve there. Oh Christ! I don't know. I haven't been there. In, I, I think, think they might. Really? I think we may have to go in and have a little sake or something. 
No, no, this is... And it's this, where, where, where Phil had his business for a while. Is that what you're talking about? No, I no, it's not what I'm talking about. No, I, I maybe I'm not describing it right, but there was a licensed establishment in a really? house. Yes, there was. I took Crystal there. I went there with Crystal a couple of times, so I know because I we we drank there. So that that could have been just somebody's house, Liam. That's true. It's possible. Yes. Liam has a tendency that if he sees many cars, he goes, "Hey, there must be a party going on," <laughs> and he'll just stop in. I'm sure I know somebody. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Very true. Especially yeah. in this area. I've done that uh, countless times. Yeah. And, so. and, and, and it's never failed. Yeah. <laughs> God, I've never been asked to leave. Yeah. But I it's... probably should have been a few times. Yeah. But people have been very gracious in the area. Okay. Well, out. so at least we have I that. think we've got, now we've got eight. There may be a ninth. If not, there's eight. Okay. You know what we should do then? We should get a, uh, a troop to follow us. Yeah. A, the trapes around with us. Yeah. Okay. It'll be like a precursor to our pub crawl in Ireland. Okay. okay? Yeah. But we'll get a, a troop to follow us around. And so we'll go and we'll get drinks at every bar. It's only nine drinks. It's only nine Eight drinks. drinks. Okay. We, you know, have that for breakfast. Okay. So we'll, we'll bring these people around and, and just, sir, we're doing it for it to help the local business community. Yeah. That's why we're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Generate yeah. interest. I'll post it online. I'll put it yeah. on social media. Chris and Liam pub crawl. Well, we'll talk about it. You know what? Off the air, we'll talk about All it. All right. In the meantime, I'd like to bring you uh, a little interview we did. Uh, it seems like such a long time ago now. Since we first mentioned it, that time elapsed is actually longer than the interview. Uh, okay. Welcome so, outside of Hollis McGuire. Exactly. We, we go down rabbit holes. We're, we're shooting the shot with Larry Robinson, brought to you by the Patterson Group of Golf Courses. Uh, in the South Ottawa area. Yeah. All right. Here's Larry Robinson. Holy cow. First of all, Big Bird, man. Status, this, this, this. Yeah. That's okay. it. How about this? Hey, Chris. We're just continuing our tour here. Hall of Famers. And uh, we interviewed your, uh, your dear friend and teammate, Steve Schott, yesterday. But for the purpose of introducing Larry to our offside audience, um, this man played 1,384 games. That's 17th all time. He played 227 playoff games. That's fourth all time in NHL history. On the Montreal Canadiens, he's fifth in career points. He had 958 career points as a defenseman, 208 goals. Conn Smythe Trophy winner, six time Stanley Cup winner as a player, four, three in the coaching ranks, another one as a consultant with the St. Louis Blues for 10 in total. One of the toughest players to ever play, and we will touch on February 17th, 74. Larry, you know I gotta go there. And we're gonna just have a blast here catching up with a guy who I first saw come to Cars with the Turpane Pontiacs in fastball and play an exhibition game against our local Cars Aces. I'd never seen a man that big at the time. Became a hero to me then and a hero to countless thousands upon thousands since as a hockey player and a coach with his role in the, in the NHL. Larry Robinson. He said that without taking a breath. I've been traveling with him for a week. He said a lot of things. <laughs> but I'm taking a breath every now and then to take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, can you pull over and get me a case of beer? Yeah. <laughs> that never happened, man. Happened. Yeah, that's right. That's illegal. Yeah, yeah but uh, it's okay for me because I was the passenger. You were the passenger. Yeah. I don't know what the laws are. So that's all. Yeah, wow. Well, it's okay. There are right. none. We haven't broke more than a dozen. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, bud. You want to start or you want me to? Well, you yeah. know what? You can start with, yeah. uh, you know, obviously uh, you have a story career across the board. I want to ask you, like, the start, starting off, if you can remember the, the highlight of your career. I know there's a lot. So what's the one thing you look back at when you lie back in bed at night? Yeah, that was me. Okay, what's that moment? Boy, well, uh, if you ate a can of beans, would you know which bean gave you gas? <laughs> <laughs> There's That's an answer about for you. <laughs> so you had a lot of gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have. A, I have. I've been very fortunate. You know, I I've had a lot of uh, great fun moments. I mean. Um, in, I came in in what 1970 or whatever, and I I played my first year in Halifax, so uh, I got to to work with uh, you know a lot of uh, great people there with uh, 
Al McNeil and Claude Ruel, and they, they gave me my start. And my first roommate was, uh, of course, um, Noel, Price. Noel Price from Ottawa. So yeah. uh, Pricey and I had kind of hit it off really good. And, yeah. and I learned the ropes from him amongst other, uh, you know, really good older players at that time. We had you know, Joe Hardy, Jermaine Gagnon, yeah. uh, Oh, who else we have? Uh, bu, 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 bu. We had Arnis in there. Yeah, had, I, I mean, no, Arnie younger. came. Arnie came he later come the next on. Year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kerry Ketter. Kerry Ketter. Kerry Ketter was there. Uh, you Yvonne Lambert was young. He had no. He, Yvonne, he Yvonne Lambert came, came later too. Okay. So I, Wayne Thomas, yeah. Michelle Plass were in goal, and yeah. of course after I went on, you know, to coach with Wayne when I was out in uh, San Jose. San Jose. Yeah. So uh, Dougie Robinson. Yeah. That was, for me, that's what won, <clears throat> because I was fortunate. I come in, I get drafted, <clears throat> come into the league, go to down to Halifax. I actually Mo played down in Halifax as well. And uh, we win the friggin' Calder Cup yeah. my very first year. Yeah. And then I get called up the following year, and uh, we go on and we win the Stanley Cup. So I got my first two years in the league, and I've got two championships. Yeah. So like, oh, this is a really easy. <laughs> it's kind of easy, I guess. <laughs> Where do I go from here? Yeah, and and then we had a little bit of a drought, and then then we went on one, you know, four four in a row. But yeah. you always say, and I I guess you could talk to any uh, athlete that that's been a hockey player, and always their first Stanley Cup is yeah. usually their biggest highlight. And for me, it was great. And the the funny story that came from my my first week, we were supposed to win, and we were talking about this earlier, and we were supposed to win it. It was a battle of the goaltenders, you know, Esposito and, and uh, Kenny Dryden. And the, the game ended up 8-7 in Montreal. Yeah. So now we got to go back to Chicago. And uh, so we go back to Chicago. We're losing 2-0. Uh, Henry scores just late in the first period. Then we come out. We get two quick ones from Tardif and Houle. And then we went on. And uh, I think Lemaire got a, another goal. And we ended up... Or at Cornway, yeah, yeah, that's right. So we ended up winning, I think, 4-2. So we get the Stanley Cup. And and Ivan and I are the last ones coming off the ice, and somebody threw a full thing of um, Johnny Walker, and it landed right beside us. If it had hit either of us, we were we were dead. But it, it, it hit, and the glass flew up and cut, cut Ivan for a Three or five stitches. As, because that. there we were, it's where you go off the end of the rink and then you have to go down the stairs to go to the dressing room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were kind of looking up and there was a whole bunch of milling going on. So I think they got the guy that, that yeah. threw it anyway. Yeah. So anyway, so we go down and now we've got to go, we've got to go to the um, hospital because Claude Rose broke his leg in the very first period. Right. And so we stopped off there on our way home. Uh, our way back to the airport, pick up Claude, and he's on a stretcher and everything. So they have the stretcher in the middle of the uh, airplane. We land, and there's like 6,000 people yeah. uh, at the airport there. And uh, and we're slightly inebriated. <laughs> and so Lafleur, so Lafleur can, can't even walk. So we have to take Claude LaRose off the gurney, put flour on the gurney, put LaRose on a on a uh, wheelchair, and so we're wheeling Rosie out and pushing Fleur out through the crowd and everything to get us get us Holy out of the. Cow. But it it was a really scary moment because you don't realize and it and and everybody had broke down the the, the gates and the barriers and everything. Yeah. So I mean, when we come off the plane, you're just engulfed in people and people are banging you and you know how to go and everything else, and so you just kind of hold your breath and you just make your way through. And when I got through, my my uh, jacket was just ripped in shreds and everything really? else. And it was a scare, really, really scary feeling. But that was my my first Stanley Cup. And welcome to the league, kid. Wow, welcome to yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, I never knew that. I yeah. forgot that Claude had broken his leg. Yeah, in, in the first period. Yeah, there. well, they, the Nets didn't move back. That's then, right. So. That's right. That's yeah. all changed after Mark Howe, right? Yeah, Mark Howe wins there. So. Uh, you, you touched on Noel Price. I just want to revisit him just for a second. He's such yeah. a dear friend of mine. And yeah. always, now, you, Mo, or you just said about Lo, uh, excuse me, Noel was such in, influential for you in Nova Scotia. You know, I mean, you mentioned him in your book. 
Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, what a what a guy to have mentor you. He'd been in the league. He'd been playing pro 14 years or 15 yeah. years at that point. Yeah, he came for uh, in the trade with uh, L.A. I think. Right. With yes, the, he did the Bashon trade. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then uh, uh, Hoganson as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Came. It was three guys, and then the, him and Doug. I mean, they basically they. Doug they're Robinson. the reason Doug Robinson yeah, were yeah. the reason that we that we won. And unfortunately, yeah. Doug, I was there the night that he lost his eye. Okay. Uh, with yeah. a stick hit him in the eye. Right. Uh, but he was a heck of a player. Yeah. Really good player. Yeah. Yeah. But I, no, I mean, I I think a Noel because, you know, I I'm, here I am. I'm coming from playing junior and everything else, and I mean, alcohol would we never. Never, I couldn't, first of all, I couldn't afford alcohol. And uh, if you bought a bottle of baby duck, that was a, you know, that was a big thing back then. Yeah. So anyway, we come after practice and I was late coming back. And uh, there's Noel sitting in the bed having a beer. And he goes, I'm going, you're drinking now? We play tomorrow. He goes, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you mean you drink beer before a game? And it says, oh, yeah, no, no, it's. You, we we everybody has a beer. You're you're playing playing hockey. You have, you have to have beer, and so anyway, so we went out and, uh, for dinner and everything else, and I had a couple of beers. And geez, I felt great the next day. I said, oh, maybe this is a good thing. <laughs> so uh, it actually helped me because that's I had a hard time. Like when I came, I I remember Gila Point says, "What well, I remember when you first came to training camp, you said you put a piece of cotton on your head, you look like a Q-tip." <laughs> I was about 193 pounds. Right. And I had a hard time keeping weight on. Right. right. I think Mo, well, you were the same thing, right? And uh, and I found that if I had a couple of beers, it helped me keep my my weight on. I, okay. I would it lose. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and now later, I I stopped drinking because it put too much weight on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. so that that was that was my uh, first introduction to Noel. He, he told me that yeah, I can. You can have beer and, and play yeah, hockey. Boy, well, you know, he's a beauty. He's, he's a great, nice great guy. guy. This guy, to the, uh, this, well, he went. He was like in his what, maybe mid to late forty or thirties. Yeah. When he came to us. Yeah. He could still beat anybody on our team. Come on. Twice around the rink. If you were going around the rink, not stopping and starting. Yeah. But around the rink, he could outskate probably ninety-five to ninety-nine percent of the. Probably not Murray Wilson because yeah. Murray Wilson could outskate Muzz, anybody. Yeah, Muzz had just. Oh, he was faster than Ivan Cornwell. Yeah, yeah. It's what uh, yeah. you guys would be the only ones that would know that because you yeah. couldn't measure it in a game in those days. No. And Cornway would get the puck at center because he was, you know, a little bit more offensive minded, obviously. Well, plus he was shorter, so yeah, it those two like he pistons going were really too. going. I'm but then to say he wasn't grease lightning himself. No, yeah. But Muzz really could fly. Oh my God! Yeah. But. Like it was like glass. He'd he'd be hurt all the time. He would just yeah he'd, yeah just, yeah. He's one of those guys. A lot of injuries. Yeah. A lot of injuries. Yeah yeah. If he could have stayed healthy, what, yeah. Like, well, you know, what a great athlete. I mean, his, both his parents were Olympic athletes. Yes, so exactly. They passed right? it down. And and Muzz actually, if you go into the annals of Ottawa high school sports, like yeah. he was one of the best athletes in the city of Ottawa. We used to compete in track and field together. Too. Oh, you, did you really? Yeah. So you knew him going back that far. Yeah, he was in the high jump, uh, and I I did the triple jump. So okay. Uh, did did we, you go to Osgood High in, yeah. in uh, OTHS? Yeah. OTHS yeah. In, in Metcalf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that fantastic, man. Oh yeah. Holy yeah. cow! I'd like to go back. I'd like to go back and see because uh, I held a lot of the uh, uh, track and field records. Yeah. In, in Osgood. Maybe still shot there, put, maybe? shot put, discus. Yeah. Triple Unless jump. Dean Holmes came along and beat some of them, no, I I competed against Dino. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going. That's the thing, Larry, is that you know you're 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 local, really, and you are, and it'd be exactly. interesting to see myself to see. We'd probably know the names, whoever it is that holds the records. I'll be named. Yeah. Certainly, I would know, or you would yeah. maybe yeah. even know. So yeah. it's uh, it's amazing when you start talking local how how much it's all linked. I make the joke about Dean Holmes. Well, the Holmes family in Osgood are they're legendary, right? Yeah. That's a legendary family. I mean, the yeah. rink's named after their dad, yeah, right. Yeah. Stuart, just Stuart and Metcalf's named after you. So yeah. it's it's uh, you can't you can't beat stuff like that. No. I love stuff like that. So, yeah. Hey, just before we leave your first cup, seventy three, could could you share something about Henri Richard with us? What it was like 
having him as a teammate. You and I were just talking as Chris was yeah. setting up here um, about some of the older guys on that 73 team. By the way, should be pointed out, the 1973 Montreal Canadiens are the Stanley Cup winning team with the most Hall of Famers on the roster. Oh, yeah. 11 guys on that roster. No other Cup winning team has that many. Yeah. And and uh, it's because you got some of those, like Henry, you had Frank Mahovlich there still. Yeah. You had guys like Jacques LaPerriere there still. Yeah. And you had all you guys that were coming up. The big three, Yvonne was there still, obviously. He caught both, right. kind of, right? Because he yeah. kept going in the 70s too. But could yeah. you share something about uh, Henri Richard? He was, uh, well, he was our captain back then. He, he never, uh, he, he wasn't a big talker. He yeah. he kind of sat right in the right in the middle. Went about his own, own did his own little thing. Yeah, uh, he wasn't the fastest guy on the ice. Yeah, uh, but he worked hard. Yeah, um, he for a for a defenseman he was awesome yeah. because he was always in the right place and you always knew that you could if you need if you were in a jam you always knew that you could give it off to him. Uh, he was he was a good passer. He could pass both sides. Yeah, and toughest nails. Yeah, he even right through to the end. He when he got mad. Yeah, I mean he came up through the old ranks. So yeah, yeah. He, they'd be in a scrum and somebody would be coming out bleeding. You don't know how it happened, yeah. but you knew that uh, that that uh, Henry had something to do with it. But uh, he was our, our kind of our quiet leader, but. It was fun because we used to always go down to his tavern, yeah, and uh, and all the guys and and uh, meet down there after. So right. he he kind of we kept that uh, camaraderie, yeah. and, and I still say to this this day, I think the reason that we won so many championships was that uh, we weren't really a team; we were a family. Yeah, you know, it, and it wasn't just the players; it was our kids, yeah, and the wives, and every everybody seemed to get along. Every and, and you felt. Worse about if there was a party called a team party, and and you weren't able to go there, you would felt felt worse if you didn't go there because yeah. you thought you were letting your your teammates down or your family down. So, we 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 did a lot of things. We uh, kept together and we we fought for each other. Yeah, you sure did. Well, well, I've heard some some stories uh, on you know when you guys were on the road and different things would happen, and, it, and I, so I, I'm I'm looking for some. Uh, oh yeah, confirmation. Yeah. yeah. So, so apparently there was an incident with a case of beer and an escalator. Were you talking to Cornway? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> it was Yvonne. It was this, this came. Oh. This came from Yvonne. He's still last. He's still laughing today about it. See? Yeah. Okay. So this was after a game. <clears throat> it was after a game in Detroit, and of course Scotty puts a curfew on, and uh, so uh, one of the guys said, "Well." Let's all, we'll all go back to my my room at the hotel. Uh, but Scotty had, I guess he had called the hotel and told him that not, they couldn't have any beer. So uh, Ivan and I went to one of the little places beside and we bought a, a case of beer uh, at one of the bars close to the, the uh, poncha train. And at the poncha train, you come in the back doors and you go up the escalators and then you go to the second floor and then catch the, your elevators to go up to the top. So I'm carrying, of course, I'm the rookie, so I'm carrying the case back. And Ivan says, Larry, wait here. He says, I'll go up the escalator and see if, Scotty, see if Scotty's up there. And, uh, and then I'll tell you to come up. So I said, okay. So I'm standing there with the case of beer like this. And he goes to the top and he goes like this and tells me to come. And so I'm going up and I'm about halfway up. He comes back and he goes, no, 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 no. So here I am trying to run back down the escalator with this full <laughs> case of beer. And I'm going, I hear this. Ah! And I look back up and he's on the floor laughing. He goes, just kidding. Come on up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he got me good. But. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so it was. Okay. Right, okay. So that's, okay. Right. So that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Right so on. I was trying to walk down this friggin' escalator with a 24 case of beer in my hands. And he basically... Yeah, right. Get it as a joke. So, that's going up. <laughs> now, so another another road story I heard. Now, actually, uh, uh, I heard this from my brother, who used to work. This is going back like forty years, probably. You were still playing, um, and you stayed at the Journey's End Hotel in East End, Ottawa. You, you were driving a vet, I, I think, at the time. Seventy-two. 
So no, it would have been early 80s. Oh, oh, that was my 66 then, probably. Okay. A red one? Yeah. You know, I, I don't remember. But, but okay. he said that uh, you were telling him that uh, Scotty Bowman used to leave a hockey stick at the front desk in the hotel for guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we tell us about that? Is like, that what, true? Is that That's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, not he didn't do it all the time. Right. But uh, we went, my first four years in the league, Yeah. we never lost a game out west. Jesus. In in all the years that we went out there. And I, I actually thought I didn't know there was sunshine in Vancouver because never went to Vancouver where it wasn't raining. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we won in Vancouver and uh, we were all saying, well, we had a couple of days off because we couldn't we didn't go home that night. We had to stay we stay over and then we because we traveled uh, commercial. So then the next day then we'd we'd leave. And so we had a nine o'clock flighter and everything. So he said, oh, okay, we're, everybody's going to go out. And Scotty made sure, you know, he said, no, guys, everybody has to come in. <laughs> you have to be in your room by 1130. Because we, when we go back, we've got games and everything. So what we didn't know was, and it was Gaetan Lefebvre, who was the trainer at the time. He, yeah. came, he came back late with Scotty. And Scotty had brought back a hockey stick with him. And so he said to the guy at the front desk, he says, um, I'm going to be uh, going up to my room right now. Uh, would you mind? Uh, most of the guys are going to be coming in a little bit later, around 11, 11.30. Could you get all the guys, when they come in, to sign this stick? And so he knew that anybody that had signed the stick come in after curfew. Right. And so that's how he'd catch everybody. <clears throat> so one of the guys that he catches is Pete Mahovlich. So the next day, the next day, uh, Scotty's standing there and he goes, Peter, you're fined $200. I, I got you coming in after curfew. And he, Pete looks at him and he goes, Scotty, you're right. Here's your 200 Here's another 200 because I'm coming in late tomorrow <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so Pete, eh? That's so Pete, yeah. yeah that's yeah. so Pete. And oh. poor Scotty, you know, he doesn't even know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of F you and F, F you and that kind of stuff. Because Scotty never sat, most of the coaches sit in the front. Yeah. Scotty never sat in the front. Always sat in the back. Him and, really? Him and Ruel sat in the back because he could see everybody coming in. Okay. You know? Yeah. And guys would come in and they'd, they'd be walking in with their, after the a game or something like that, with their coats and they're going clink, 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 yeah. clink, clink, <laughs> clink. <laughs> they'd just sit down because they'd, we, back then, we you weren't allowed to have beer after. Yeah. So everybody bring their own. So Larry, I said in the yeah. intro uh, we were going to touch on February seventeen seventy four. That's a Dave Schultz, right? Yeah. Obviously, and uh, we got to touch on that simply because of the role that, not the role, but the, the what you were able to provide for the Montreal Canadiens, who also had a number of other players like. Pierre Bouchard, make no mistake. Toughest Bru guy ever. Bruin fans want to talk about Jonathan in 78. That's fine. You know, for seven or eight years prior to that, he was a force. Like, he was an absolute force. Like, you tell people that maybe don't remember him dressing and playing and being effective with the gloves on as a player, but also obviously off as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, a number of other guys on the team that were fractious and could take care of themselves. Yeah. But that incident with Schultz, most people in hockey history feel was a game changer. And I've asked you everything about it over time. I don't want to go over it verbatim. I know you're, you've talked about it absolutely ad nausea. However, one thing I've never really asked you about that night was Schultz destroyed Van Boxen. And well, yeah, it, it, it was Boxy, I mean, it was, it was his fault. Right. Because Boxy had it, he didn't think he was going to get hit. Right. And, uh, and so all. I mean, Boxy had his arms down here, and all uh, Schultz did, he sucker punched him. Sucker gun. Okay. You know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, everybody's talked to him about that before, but Boxy, I think, gave him the stick before that. So, okay. if you're going to give it, you better you, be you ready gotta, to take it. You got to know. And he, it was his own fault. He just didn't prepare himself. But, right. Uh, he went down pretty hard, though. Yeah. But, but I, I don't know if that, that wasn't the cause of what happened later. No, no. What had happened later was, and... Actually, I had left the bench. I was, yeah. I was uh, gone into the dressing room. I don't know. I got clipped by a stick or whatever from Kinderchuck. And so uh, I had gone back into the dressing room. And all of a sudden, one of the, rush the ushers came running in. Said, Larry, Larry, you got to get out of here. There's a bench clearing brawl or whatever. 
So Caesar be shrimp. So I uh, so I, I took off and I had my skates were undone. Yeah. So I stopped at the bench and tightened my skates. And by the time I got on, everybody had kind of paired up. And yeah. I guess what had happened was uh, Pierre uh, Butch had hit Clarky in the corner. Okay. Right. Right. And that's what started the whole thing. And okay. then every then of course somebody else came in and uh, and so on and so forth. And by the, that time the both benches had had, uh, had cleared. So yeah. so anyway, I'm coming back on. And as I'm coming on the ice, I just kind of looked up, and of course, Schultze was was the only one that hadn't didn't have a partner, and he was starting to head towards where Lafleur was because he didn't have a partner, and uh, so I I just headed straight towards Schultze, and and we kind of grabbed each other. Yeah. Not, I, I had no, at that time I wasn't thinking there was of fighting or anything else, and we were just kind of grappling back and forth yeah. and. I think uh, Dornhofer and Pete were yeah. off and one other, and they were kind of doing something. And and I I hadn't uh, really wasn't kind of paying attention. I was kind of looking what was going on over there. And then Schultze kind of grabbed me like that, and I thought he tried to headbutt you. Headbutt me. Yeah. So I got my my hand my right hand loose on him. Yeah. And and then when I got my hand lo loose. He had kind of pulled me again, and that's when I started to swing. Did, did, were you guys talking at all? Did, no. Did, you didn't never say said a, Never said a word. Never said a word. No. So, so he, yeah. So then, and then uh, I got the first one in, and then I was, I kind of pulled him a little bit, and he kind of lost balance and went yeah. down like that, and I was throwing uppercuts, yeah. and then DuPont and yeah. a whole bunch of guys just jumped on my back. Yeah. <clears throat> and when it was all back over, when it was all said and done, and mm -hmm. I went back over into the yeah. corner, and Dupont was in the in the corner. I said, "Okay, you whatever." Yeah. I said, uh, "I said now that I you haven't got me from jumping from behind." I said, "What what are you going to do now?" Yeah. And he goes, "Oh no, Larry, I'm just uh, just protecting my life. Yeah. I said, "Yeah, right." <laughs> but I was tired anyway, so I went back. <laughs> tired of. Well, you yeah, but the, the problem is, is you get into and you forget to breathe. Yeah. You know, you're holding your breath and you're swinging. Yeah. And, yeah. I wasn't by any means a boxer. Mo was a good fighter too. I know he was. Me too. And we both and we Jonesy both, too. Yeah, and we both came up around the same time with a lot of tough guys. He, yeah. He came up with Knuckles Nylon, who's yeah started everything every every game. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. He was tough. He and he knew how to fight too. Chris knew how to fight. Well, what a smart fighter. Smart very, very fighter smart and fighter. he. And he cut people, right? I think uh, pound for pound, Kordak was tougher. Yeah, because yeah. he was bigger and stronger and yeah. hit harder. Yeah, it's like everybody talks about Probert. Yeah, <clears throat> and Probert was one of the toughest, and in his time, no but, question. But they said that um, who's the other guy that was in Detroit at the time? Joey Kosher. Kosher. Yeah, they said Kosher probably hit harder than yeah. any anybody they've ever seen. Yeah. He had a right hand and would knock out a push. Right? Yes. Said, yeah. He, yeah. You know, he, he, some of his early fights, like he, he fought a guy named Dave Richter. Yeah. Some of some of the other guys, like he fought uh, Harold Snaps. He, he some of those first ones till he got full understanding of, his, I think, of his range and how, yeah, not that he didn't fight in junior, but he wasn't fighting a lot of guys of that stature. Right. In junior, and once he got acclimatized to it, then yeah, he was absolutely. I mean, oh. the Bruce Brothers, Robert yeah. and Kosher, they were, they were devastating. Devastating. Devastating on Detroit, for sure. Well, I got a question. Throughout your career, I think there was an image of you being a gentle giant, if I can use that. Or I know it's old fucking used, but, you know, you could use that. We can swear on our show, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Just in case. Uh, so, yeah. He's, he's not editing that out. You know. <laughs> okay. So, you're, you know, a lot of people, you didn't have, I mean, you, you Fight, you know, we know that, but you, you weren't fighting all the time. You, you no, know, you, you didn't. That was not part of your game as a, for the most part. Well, they did. Scotty didn't want me fighting all the time, right? You no, know, he, he would because when I first when I first came to uh, in, in Halifax, basically Al McNeil told me, he said, You either get tougher and and meaner, or you can't play here, you'll never be anything in the NHL, or you'll never make it. So, so the next day, then you, you got in. I got in two fights or whatever. Yeah. But 
the game was different back then too. Yeah. yeah. Our our the American League when I when I first started, yeah, it was tougher than the NHL. Yeah. Because all the I hate calling them goons, but all yeah. the, all the fighters and everything, enforcers, yeah, enforcers, yeah. all got sent down to the minors because they'd only call them up when they when they needed them. So I mean, we had Richie Leduc and yeah. Reggie Fleming and Bosniak and all these tough guys, all playing down in down in the minors. Actually, I I played. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, it was not so. Every, it was nothing to have two, three. Bench clearing brawls, yeah, a night, yeah, and and so you, it was basically you either you either take a fight or, or you either take you either fight took a fight or, or or you got run out of the league. We, we came home one night. Remember Lynn Palace? Yep, yep. One of the funniest guys I've ever seen. So <clears throat> we we uh, we went after practice or something. They had a really really good tavern just down the road from us in. Uh, in Halifax, and so we went there, and we we were all hammered after, and so uh, we, we got a call, and, and we all, we were driving with Lynn. We got a call from his wife. Said Lynn, uh, get your get your ass home here. We got to go and do something or whatever. And, he, and so he's talking to her, and he said, and we could hear him. She, she says, well, make sure somebody else drives because you can't drive. You're drunk. We were all just as drunk as him. So anyway, we get into the we get into the car and we're driving home, and I don't think we were over five or ten miles an hour driving up <laughs> into there. But the problem is, is we went into the parking lot and it was five miles an hour and ten miles an hour right in, and we just we hit against the wall, boom, <laughs> like that. You're there. <laughs> we're there, and Ben looks all around us. He goes, Whoop. He "Said what was that?" And he's driving, so he gets out and he looks up, and there's his wife standing there like this, with her arms on her side. And he goes, "You asshole! Get up here!" Oh man, talked to you about this before. When Muzz used to run the fantasy camps in Chambla and and have the get-togethers, and then he, he used to do a golf thing, and everybody would go to uh, Dickie Moore's course, yeah, at a rundown. And I walked in behind you that one time. You may recall this. As soon as I say it, you probably will. One of the coolest things I've ever, ever seen uh, because Dollard Saint Laurent and Phil Goyette and some of the guys were sitting on the porch and they got up to meet you when you walked in and you went up and you and Dolly hugged each other and he said, hey, young 19. And you said, hey, old 19, because you guys both wore 19. And I just thought it was one of the coolest things. There was, yeah, but it. there was always a great camaraderie with uh, with the old timers and and the the present day uh, Montreal Canadiens. When, well, present day when when I was there, yeah, yeah, because they were always around. They used to they used to have a room right across the the uh, the way from our dressing room, right? And and our our dressing room was always wide open, and the, the guys always came to the games and everything else. And I think that's that's kind of missing in today's game. Yeah, a lot is that they don't. It's like it's like the uh, the old guys don't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that camaraderie was was always always present back yeah. when I was playing. So your career spanned obviously seventeen, decades, right? Yeah. And you know, I would I would I'm venturing to say that your time in L.A. was very different than your time in oh. Montreal. Way different. So tell us a little bit about that, like about about what it was like to be in LA. I mean, you guys, you know, went to the show or like to the to the, to the dance, yeah, uh, in LA uh, at that time. So your role being an elder statesman at that point. No, I was an old fart the back yeah, there. Okay. Yeah, but but you know, how did your role change, and, and what what were, what was the difference in the team, the family, or whatever that you guys? Well, I, it was a. It, as it turned out, it was a, one of the best things that ever happened to me because I, I ended up going back there to coach for four years. They gave me my start in, in coaching, whether that had a lot to do with my playing there or not. But I had a, a uh, it, for me, it was a tough, tough transition because I, I, uh, looking back on it, I wish I had been able to finish, start and finish my career in the same spot. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I got to probably play with one of the greatest 
players ever in, in Wayne Gretzky. Yep. And met, met and still have a lot of great friendships with, you know, Jimmy Fox, who yeah. gave up his number. Honestly, gave up, yeah. yeah, he gave up his number for, right. for me. He took six and gave me his 19. Yeah. And uh, so, we're, I mean, we still, we're still friends and we still converse and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, I was having a tough time because it was a different style that they were playing out there with, with Wayne and everything else. And uh, Rick Wilson was the coach at the time. And I actually played with Rick in Halifax yeah. uh, when I first started. He was, he was a defenseman at the time. And uh, Rick and, and Rogi called me into the office and said, Larry, we don't want you playing like Wayne Gretzky. We brought you here to play like we want, like you're, you played in, in Montreal, you know. Uh, just, just play your game and quit trying to do uh, what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And that, that, it basically saved my career probably out there and that, I finally just said, oh, yeah, okay. So I went back to playing the way that I knew how to play, not that fire wagon hockey that yeah. Yeah. they were playing out there. And, and uh, so it, it, it ended up, uh, <clears throat> basically, I got all the young kids that yeah. they called up. Uh, Robbie Blake, when he first came in, he, I played with him uh, when he first started. And uh, um, Duchesne was my partner for a long time. Yeah, Steve uh, Duchesne. Steve Duchesne, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, so uh, it was fun. And, and what was Wayne like? What, what was he like as a teammate? What was he like for your opinion in the? Uh, no, no, I, he'd been through Edmonton already. Yeah, so he's no. I mean, he was he was great. I mean, and uh, it's not not my kind of circle. Yeah, you know, like he was in, involved with all the movie stars and all that other yeah stuff. And everywhere he went, I mean, he couldn't go anywhere and. And hide. It was basically everywhere he went. He was like a movie star, and yeah. had to have security around him and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's, that's not me. I'm I'm a farm boy. Yeah, I, I like my privacy. And uh, so Dave Taylor and I ended up hanging around quite a bit. Oh yeah. So yeah, uh, we lived not too far from each other, and so yeah, we spent a lot of time together. Our his wife and my wife were, were good friends, and right he had young kids, and I had I had. Uh, Jeff was yeah. going to uh, what Loyola Marymount at the time, and uh, so we lived in Studio City first, and it was beautiful. I mean, it overlooked the uh, um, Universal Studios, and I mean, it was it was so great to be able to come out of the rink, jump in your car, go back home, jump in the jacuzzi, and have a beer and sit yeah. sit outside. It was just it was just so different. It was it was wonderful. The only the only drawback is, is that the traveling just kicked the crap out of you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It wasn't until, you know, Anaheim came along and then later on when they bought their own planes and everything else that you could compete with all the, the teams back east. Yeah. I mean, I played in Jersey. You were home every, you were home every night. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, you took a, a bus to Washington, you took a bus to uh, New York, you took a bus to Long Island. Philly. I mean, Philly. Yeah. L.A. I mean, your shortest, your shortest trip was uh, three hours to Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. So it, that took its toll on you. But I, I had a good time out there. Met a lot of great, great people. And of course, uh, my daughter's was uh, came out there with us, and now she lives out there. Yeah. With the uh, with her family. So have you ever Hackett. heard the Buddy Hackett story about that? No. <laughs> There's a guy that goes in to get a penal enlargement. And the doctor says, well, it's funny you're, you're asking that. We just have this new uh, procedure now where we take a elephant's trunk and we attach it to your penis. And uh, basically you have it enlarged. He goes, well, I don't know. I'll have to ask my wife. So ask the wife and the wife goes, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So went away. They, they do it and everything, and the wife's really, really happy and so on and so forth. So they get invited over to the wife's uh, parents' place. And so they're all sitting there, and uh, the wife, of course, she's really happy now because she's having great sex with his, her new husband's uh, penis and everything. So she starts playing with the guy's leg. And, of course, 
the trunk's starting to get bigger and bigger and all of a sudden this trunk comes up, grabs a grabs the baked potato and goes back down <laughs> goes back down and and they're looking around and the mother I guess saw it and it says um, excuse me uh, uh, could you could you do that again he goes I'd like to but I don't think there's room for another potato up my ass <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That was Buddy Hack. It's funny, you know, because you ask, you ask, uh, like, uh, we travel a lot on the planes and everything else, so you, you talk to the stewardesses and everything else, and every one of them say the same thing. The hockey players are the nicest, nicest people that they they ever deal with. He said the, the basketball players are all a bunch of assholes, and football players are rude and whatever, and baseball players, the same thing. <laughs> Uh, but should never, they never had a, never met a bad hockey player. And that's pretty well, because you, when you think about it, to get into hockey, it's, it's not, you can't just have a, somebody out of the back 40 that doesn't have any money that can get into hockey. It's hockey so damn expensive. Yeah. You know, it's usually very affluential people and, and, uh, they, scrimp and scrape for every dime that they can get so that they can afford to play the game. Yeah. So it's usually a good yeah. a good mixture of, of, of uh, people that play play hockey. So yeah. Getting recognized, right? So <clears throat> if I'm walking down the street and I see a guy that looks like they're wrong somebody, okay, and I walk, and I, would kind of, I would kind of just sort of give the, <laughs> the Canadian nod and yeah. then move on. Do you, do you get a lot of people uh, <coughs> Coming up to you, like I gotta tell you that story. Were you with me? No, or, or was you? No, this my son, Bob. So, where you guys were this morning at that yep. golf course? Yep. So the first time I go over to play the golf course with my son, um, we're we're put with these two guys, uh, Bob and I can't remember his friend. Let's just for argument's sake, we'll say his, his name was Jack or whatever. So he's in this cart with Boston Bruins memorabilia everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Tattoo. Yeah, he's got a ta Bobby Orr tattoo. Bob, Bobby Orr tattoo. And then on the other <laughs> arm, he's got the uh, 18th hole of the champions where he had hit an eagle at Eagle Ridge. So he had the, that hole and, and that he shot an eagle. So he had that tattooed on his arm. So anyway, we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> he's he about seventy-five. Oh, he's more than that. Oh, he's more than that. himself. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we're we're playing along and we're talking about uh, where are you guys from? Well, so we're from Canada or whatever, and and so on and so forth. And uh, so anyway, we start, got talking on hockey or something, and uh, he goes, you know what I. Uh, coming from Bath, I hated the Montreal Canadiens and especially that Larry Robinson. And I look over at him and I go, "Don't you dare!" Because like, he he started goes going to say something, and and I said, "Oh yeah, why?" He said, "Why?" Because he said they always won, and we could never get into the zone because he was always uh, winning, and he was always uh, bumping into our guys and knocking us over and so on and so forth. So anyway, uh, he didn't put two and two together. Unbelievable. Because he, he, when I introduced myself, I'm Larry and this is Jeff. Yeah. So anyway, we're going down. We had hit our shots, so we're going down, and he's driving over there, and I'm driving here. All of a sudden, I see the cart turning like that, and he comes roaring over, and he goes, Figured it out. You're fucking Larry Robinson. <laughs> 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 oh, we started laughing, and then yeah. So anyway, that's how it started. And then we then we started we golfed with him like what about three or four really? Saturdays. Oh, he said we had the greatest time. We were no laughing way. and the whole bit and wow. talking like Boston stories and Montreal stories and all this kind of stuff. And then sadly, all of a sudden, we did, he didn't show up one one day, and so we were asking, and he goes, "Yeah." He uh, had a heart attack and had passed away oh about a month month later. Oh wow! Yeah. So you're fucking Larry Robinson. <laughs>
I go, yeah, that's me. <laughs> After not only calling out the halves, but you specifically. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, I assume that fucking Liam McGuire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Would you go? He's saying it for sure. Uh, now, obviously, being down in Florida, there are a lot of Canadians too. Sure. But you find you have a great amount of anonymity here, like you can just be who you are. Now it, now it is. Yeah. I, because I, you know, I'm so far removed from when I played. A lot of the younger people don't remember or hadn't seen me, so I, it's up here. It's it's worse because well, yeah, there's a lot more people my age. Yeah, and uh, when they find out where I'm from, so yeah. you, so you look a lot like. And I go, no, no, no. It's, yeah, it's another guy. It's another guy. I say, people say that to me. I say Tom Selleck, and they say <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I say Danny DeVito. <laughs> So, George uh, Clooney? Exactly. <laughs> well, Chris was asking about what goal stands out. I'll tell you what one. I mean, Larry, um, first goal of game five, 78, gets the Bruins in the final. You go coast to coast. Yeah. You know, that, that you go up, the, you put the Habs up one nothing. Like, that's a pivotal game. Like, if you think yeah. about it, you sweep them in 77, you beat them in six and 78, goes to OT in 79. I mean, they were they were right there. Finished, obviously, beat them all three times. But the, the, the rivalry, not just a... Bouchard, Jonathan, and Wentz, Inc., and Luke gave that game. But, uh, by the way, Tremblay hammered Schmott's very next game. I don't yeah. know that it gets lost in conversation. But, regardless, uh, that goal, I mean, that's got to be the greatest goal that you ever scored. I, I, I know that you got the one against Philly in the 70s and 73 because it was – Yeah, but that was a shot. That was a shot, right? Yeah. But this one here, man, coast to coast, like butter toast. I mean, it's amazing. That's got to be a great goal. Yeah, that's one of my better goals I think I ever scored. Yeah. Yeah. How I did it, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at that game. I sit behind the Boston goalie. Were you really? Yeah. yeah. Jerry. Yeah, the Cheevers. Yeah. Against Cheevers, yeah. yeah. It started out, and it's funny because I, I, I came around. I came around. Serge had the puck, and then I came around behind and picked yeah. it up and then took off and went up, went all the way up the side. Yeah. And, and it was good because... Uh, the fact that I got to go around Millbury, who just I know was I love doing, yeah, absolutely. But then Cheesy kind of he really he tried to poke check me yeah. early, so I was able to bring it in and yeah, he gave you enough, excuse room me, and you put it back the same side up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was that was fun, uh, fun small. times. Uh, it's not just it was a beautiful goal, but how impactful it was, like that was you know, it was the first goal of the game, yeah. You know, yeah. so it kind of set the tone because it was zero zero for like forever. Yeah, it was a good series. It, it was, was a hell of a series. Yeah. It was a hell of a series. Obviously, you know the violence in um, in games in, in game five and six. But but uh, uh, you know, I mean, hey, they were coming and they wanted it. And look, yeah, Stan got the better of Pierre. Whatever, you know. Well, I mean, you know what? I um, I because I was standing right beside there, and yeah. the, the funny thing is, is that uh, Stan got. Got uh, Butch with the first one on the on the nose. On the so nose. his eyes were watering and everything. Yeah. But then D'Amico jumps in the middle. Yeah. And just as Pierre Pierre swung. Yeah. And so all the blood on the ice wasn't from Pierre. It was from I D'Amico. know D'Amico was cut badly too. Yeah. That was from a punch that was supposed to get Jonathan. Should have got Jonathan. Yeah. Should have got Jonathan. So yeah. if yeah. if D'Amico doesn't jump in, yeah. Trust me, that turns out a lot. And and that's the only bad thing about that happened from that. And I still, I mean, I haven't brought it up with Scotty, but I, uh, it, it just, it ate Butch up because Butch and I were roommates at the time. Oh, you were? Is that the following game, Yeah. Pierre wanted to go back and, and get dressed, and he wasn't dressed for the next game. Right. And that, the, from then on, it, Butch was just not the same. No, no. But, so uh, Butch would have gone on him, eh? Would have oh, gone him again. Yeah. He, he was... When he, when he, like, he's just fooling around, Butch would just, you know, punch you. Yeah. And your next day you'd look and you'd have a friggin' yeah, uh, burst. Oh, he was yeah. brute strong. Yeah. Oh, really, really strong. Yeah. yeah. But it's the way it goes. Got, got to talk about, um, you, you know, the run with the 77 Habs and what it meant to, to be on that team that only lost eight games. He only lost 37 in four years. I mean, teams are doing that in a season. That's ridiculous what you did. Yeah. I just want you to speak to what uh, it was like year in, week in, week out, month in, month out. When you go through the playoffs and win the Stanley Cup four years in a row, it's unbelievable. 
if you could just share some thoughts on, on the dominance, especially from the big threes perspective. You, Serge, and you, Serge, and Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same thing. Well, we didn't. Uh, you I am wearing the shirt. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, is one of the losses was uh, two to one to Oakland Seals and Jill Malosh. Right. We outshot them 48 to 13 and we lost two to one. Jeez. And they had champagne in the dressing room and the whole <laughs> bit. But, you know, I, I think that's what made Scotty so special. Yeah. Is, is that was a hell of a team. Yeah. And, but he never let us feel like we were a hell of a team. Yeah. He always kept us on edge. Yeah. You know, we'd come back, like I said, uh, we'd go out, out west, win all our games, come yeah. back home, and next day skate the shit out of us. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then we'd have an off game where maybe we won, but we did, we won in the third period, and Kenny kept us in the first two games, the yeah. first two periods or whatever. Yeah. And the next day, say, okay, guys, and no, nobody's on the ice, go. So he always kept you off balance. Yeah. He never, never let the complacency. And that's, to me, that's what I brought when, when I started coaching. Yeah. Is I, I took some stuff from Scotty and stuff that I learned from Lemaire and whatever. And, and uh, you, you almost, you, anybody can draw up and make plans for practices and all that other stuff. Yeah. But it's to be able to communicate with your players and motivate them and know when to push the buttons, yeah. when to kick them in the ass, when to pat yeah. them on the back and everything else. There, and, uh, and, and Scotty was good at that. Well, go back to the doubles. I'll finish on that one. I'll throw it back to Chris. But, uh, but um, uh, before we get to the doubles in 2000 and your Stanley Cup there, uh, can you just share something about the flower? I, I know I've asked you about him many times, but, you know, the guy, what he, what he meant to, to – the Montreal Canadiens, what he meant to the province of Quebec, what he meant to hockey in Canada, what he meant to hockey in the NHL. Uh, he was a teammate. I know he was a friend. Um, you know, you, you you spoke at the funeral. Uh, can yeah. you share something about Guy? We asked Shuddy about it too, and you know, about uh, how he's the worst guy at practice. Like, he didn't, never wanted him doing the drill first, apparently. Oh, horrible. <laughs> yes. But I've never seen... The thing that was so great about Flower is that we, we'd have training camp. Come to training camp. Uh, Flower, would, have you been on skates? Nope. What have you been doing? Well, I did those. I'm doing this commercial and whatever. And yeah. ever. He put on his stuff. we go out on the ice and be the best friggin' guy on the ice. Like for just, real. Just for real. Wow. Just He would just unending. The guy could shoot. The guy could take a pass. I mean, you had a, you had a probably about a four or five foot area around him. Yeah. It was on his backhand, didn't matter. If it was on his, on the other side, he'd take one hand off, and he was so friggin' strong. I mean, he had Popeye arms. Yeah, I, I know. Until Huge. I met him, until I, until Huge. I met him, I didn't realize oh. how friggin' his arms were just like. Oh no, it was just like pipe steel. Yeah. Yeah. So he could take a pass and shoot and and do everything. But he, I mean, I wouldn't say he was overly fast, and he had kind of a. He, he didn't have a like Murray Wilson has a beautiful stride. Yeah. Like Van Cornway, a beautiful stride. Yeah. Uh, Gies was kind of choppy, yeah. but really efficient. Yeah. And he could turn on a dime, and uh, and all of his, everything that uh, he did came naturally. Yeah. I mean, he was just a natural, natural hockey player. Yeah, that's what she like was that, and, 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 and that's what, what Stevie was talking about. I mean, if you were, <clears throat> we had a, like, Serge and I usually played with him, with, with Flower, uh, Shuddy, and then I think it was Pete Mahovlich or Jacques Lemaire in yep. the middle. Yeah. And we always had a thing. Shuddy, if we're going out your side, you know, we can we can shoot it around because we knew Shuddy was always going to be there. Yeah. But if we were going out the other side, yeah, uh, it was either my, myself swinging that way or, yep. or Serge going that way, or we'd use Lemaire in the middle. Flower, just where he was going, to, we didn't know. <laughs> we, we'd get it to him eventually, but... <laughs> Uh, but that's the way he was. There, there's such a great image of you, uh, Thursday, May 10, 79, the too many men on the ice call. Yeah. And uh, game seven against Boston. Sorry, for yourself. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. But after Flower, I was at that game. Yeah. And when Flower scored, I swear to God, as God is my witness, the railing shook in the forum. I was there with my late father, and we had standing room, and the railing shook when Flower scored. And when you watch it, there's such a great image of you skating over 
You know, Lemaire obviously was first on the scene. Obviously, the game was tied. You have to go to OT and Lambert yeah. at 933. But you're, you're next guy on the scene coming in and congratulate him. Uh, you guys have tied the game with a buck 19 to go. And another tremendous shot by Guy Lafleur. Yeah. His shot. Like, did he did he work? Did you see him in practice shooting a lot of pucks? He'd like be that? out there for 40 minutes before practice. Really? Just sh He'd shoot probably two, 300 pucks before practice. No kidding. Every day almost. Wow. Yeah, he was amazing. Amazing. He could put it wherever he wanted to. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't a lucky shot. No. But I have to tell you something about that. That you're talking about Lambert? Yeah. So we tie it, right? Yeah. And then uh, we go into overtime. Uh, Mc, uh, Peter McNabb's coming down uh, on my side. So I take Peter out. We both fall. We go into the boards and I look back. And, and Terry O'Reilly's got the puck all alone yeah. <clears throat> in front against Kenny. And I looked at Peter and I went, oh, fuck. And he put it over the net. Yeah. Missed the net. We went, we went back down. Yeah. <clears throat> they made the pass across, banging yeah. in the net. That's how the difference between winning and losing. Un unbelievable. Yeah. That was, I mean, Mario threw it across. Reggie made, even Reggie at center ice, a nice little tip. To Mario on the fly? It's probably because he was scared to death he was going to get hit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I don't want the puck here. <laughs> you know, Reggie's doing a great job of the alumni. Yeah, yeah he does. He works hard. He, he, he works hard. I'm yeah. going to the game on Tuesday night, and yeah. he got me tickets, you know? Yeah. And and uh, I'm so appreciative of that. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, be involved with the alumni there, the little bit that I am. But And uh, I got last one, Larry. I could go on for an hour. But last one for you. We do have to wrap up. We want to be cognizant of here. So there's a story about you in New Jersey. For, so first of all, I mean, you got hired eight games to go in the regular season. I think it was. Yeah, it wasn't very many. What was it like? Were you were, like? I was at home. I just got into the car. I was leaving to go to practice, and I got a phone call from Lou. I said Larry, I made the decision. Uh, I've I've uh, let Robbie go. I want you to be the coach. I, I uh, uh, what? And I, I'm sure I must have, I, I must have swallowed my tongue or whatever. But I remember hesitating, and I go, uh, "You want me?" He goes, "Yes, I think you know you can take over for the rest of the year." I said, "Well, okay, whatever." And, and then I went to the to the my first practice then. Wow! And my, the first thing, and the first thing I did is I called a meeting because there was a lot of talking, and and uh, I I love Robbie Fatorik. He was, great friend and, and I uh, he helped me a lot again in my coaching he, he allowed me during the lockout to run practices down in the minor leagues to learn how to do all that kind of stuff yeah and uh, but Robbie's problem was is that uh, Arnott and Sakura and all those guys and Eliash uh, if they did something wrong it wasn't like some of the other guys when they did something okay, wrong. Gotcha. you know there were, there were, he didn't Kind of a two-tier system? Kind of a two-tier system. I guess that's the best way of putting it. And and so there was a lot of grumbling going on outside of the team and inside the team and so on and so forth. But, well, we don't have any leaders and everything else. Uh, so the, my first first uh, thing I did is I brought everybody in. I said, okay, enough of the bullshit. Yeah. You know, you're all saying uh, you're pointing the fingers and this and that, saying you don't have any leaders and so on and so forth. And I pointed at Scotty Stevens. And uh, I said, you got the best leader right here. You don't want a leader that's going to get up, rah, 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 and everything else. This guy comes here and works his ass off every day, he fights for you. He does everything. I said, you got the best leader here in Scotty. And that's where we're going to start. And from then on, holy cheese, Scotty played some of the best hockey of his life. Uh, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you're segwaying yeah. into that, because that was going to be my question about your relationship yeah. with Scott Stevens. Yeah, yeah we, we became really really close okay well first of all i had to coach him as, as an assistant i had to right. and i remember the first time i i saw him come off and after he made a mistake and i went over to talk to him about the mistake and then i could see the the you know i thought he was going to eat eat my uh, arm and whatever and i i realized after he said okay you got to give him about two or three seconds to calm down because he had an unbelievable temper and everything yeah, yeah. And, that, and and that's when I first had the conversation, I said, Scotty, you know, you, you can't be doing all that. He says, you're, you're valuable to us. Oh, yeah. 
So, and, and you're not a, you're not a stranger to going out at night in your life. So let's say you're, you're, you head off to the, uh, the karaoke on Saturday night. What's Larry Robinson's go-to song? Uh, we are champions. Oh yeah! <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Why not, Queen? Yeah, yeah, Queen. yeah. It's and a good really, one. Really is, or are you just doing that because you're? No, I love that song. Oh, you do it. Eh? Yeah. I've seen that uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I think I've seen it like four times. Really? Yeah. That's an awesome. Oh, it's yeah. great movie. Yeah. Great yeah. movie. Yeah. When that when when they show the stadium, yeah, yeah. and they're all singing, oh, yeah. it just gives you it gives you goosebumps. It's yeah. Amazing story. Yeah. Now, you know what? I'm going to use that as a jumping off point for the final thing. As a, as a player, as a coach, you're surrounded by fans and noise and adulation for years. Leaving that, you know, what's it like post-career as a regular guy? I'm more busy now uh, since I left hockey than I did when I was in hockey. It's, you just... I mean, you look at my cal my calendar. I can't find the numbers. There's something going on all the time. Uh, like, because Mo now comes down for the for the winter, and so we're we're golfing at least two or three or four times a week. And uh, my brother-in-law comes and spends three months with us uh, during the winter. And uh, I spent one win or one summer here, and I said I'd never do it again because it's so damn hot and humid. So I go back Christmas to back up home. And now, and I have a boat now, so yeah, uh, I miss it. Yeah, yeah, I finally bought it. I I sold my forty eight and bought a forty four sedan bridge. So I want to get back on the water because yeah. for me, that's my downtime. There you go. You know, it takes me about a week, but by by about the end of the first week, it's just like putting a needle in a in a balloon. Right. Just yeah. you just relax, and it's. The most peaceful thing I've ever done. Excellent. Well, I have to thank you for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. you know Thanks, Chris. You're, you're not as intimidating as I was expecting. I appreciate it. I'm sitting, that's why. That's right. It's right. a game changer when you stand up. All right. This has been Offside with Hans McGuire. I'm Hans. I'm McGuire. All right, we're back. And we, have, uh, we haven't gone on a pub crawl yet, but we're planning on it. Yeah. Okay. Before we end this whole thing, it was, by the way, uh, as I said, apologies for the sound uh, quality, yeah. things that went on there. We but, didn't know. Yeah, yeah, no, we, you know what? We did the best we could. Yeah. Okay, with what we had, yeah. and that's all that we're. That is, frankly, that that's exactly what I said to my wife on our wedding night. <laughs> I I did the best I can uh, with what I have, that's and it. Uh, and it. you know, so. Uh, we're going to do, before we end this whole episode, we're going to do a couple yeah. of things yeah. that we, we normally do. Uh, we do our, uh, our This Week in Hockey History. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right now we're going to go to This Week in Hockey History. Hello, Canada. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly. Back to Lafleur. Oh, the bossy shoots. He scores. Oh. This Week. In hockey history. Okay, welcome back to this week in hockey history. It just seems like seconds ago that we were we were just throwing to that bumper, and then now we're already back. It's crazy. It's technology. Oh, it's Tell you me. know what? It uh, it's it's actually AI. AI. A AI. Yeah, wow. it's AI. AI is something else. I'm just kind of getting into it. And, uh, it's, well, you know what? Do you have, is it an app or what is it? How do you how do well, you how use it? Well, yeah. One of the things that I do for yeah. the, for the, the show, preamble that you've been yeah. oh yeah so one of the things I do for the show is in order to put it on a uh, you have to upload it to um, a, a website for it to go onto Spotify where we have the podcast and all that stuff <clears throat> and so it goes in and it it sort of goes through the sound and makes sure it's clear it tries to edit it and it uses AI to do that okay, okay? And, but it also will listen to everything and make a summary. Yeah. Of all the um, topics. All the topics. Everything yeah. you say. It'll say what we talk about. It'll actually do a whole, like, you know, transcript for you. Now, it fucking misspells both of our names all the time. Right. It, it, it right. spells my name, H A A S, <clears throat> which is the, the kind of the German way of spelling it. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm not German. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, and it spells McGuire. MCG. Okay, MCG, yeah. which I go in and I change all the time. I change it, I change it, I change it. And yeah. sometimes I miss. And yeah. then Liam shits. He gets fucking loot. He goes, what are you going to learn? And he starts throwing things. You should see him. It's, it's you oh, know. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh, yeah. It's yeah. almost Brady Kachuk like. No, 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 no I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So anyhow, sometimes I miss it, but for the most part, I go through. Yeah. So it does. Well, now that I know, yeah, I did not know that. I did not know you were doing that. I was oh. going look at Chris waxing so poetically about well, I do. Our, oh, I do. our webcast. I do wax uh, poetically. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. Yeah, I, no, I do, I, and I have to change it because it, yeah. it, it, you know. But it, it, here's the thing: sometimes they, it gets a little too. No, no, it, you, you can know, tell you, where it's AI, you know, and and, and you know, and, and so you got it. I, I have to edit it and change it, but it saves a significant amount of time. That's yeah, pretty cool. Okay, I, I don't know. I, do you not see the bump? I mean, I think there's a bump in our viewership since you started posting those preambles. No. Well, I shouldn't say that. I, you know what? I, I've been doing that all season, all season long. I've been using. Are you it. sure? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but Jeez. you know, you know, I, I will tell you this. And, and I'm going to be straightforward with all of the viewers out there. Uh, our numbers are are down. Yep. Ever since I took the big titted women off of the. Well, thumbnail. bring them back. Well, I'm just. Well, I know, but well, it, if I, I do this week I in can't. hockey and ask Liam, like I can't do it all. <laughs> I can't do it all. Okay. No, but, get the big titted no, women. You you, you said you didn't want the crooners get. No, okay. I never said I didn't want it. Okay. I never said that. In all fact, right. I got to make a. I'm going to make a confession right now publicly. Okay. To support you, and it came from. One of, if not the most hardcore friend I have as a okay. hockey fan is Peter Oliver. Okay. The guy known as yeah. Ollie. Ollie, I had I went over to uh, where he's, he's house sitting for his sister, and him and his son were there, Bryce. Bryce is a regular watcher of the show. Yeah. And he will, his dad's not on anything, so he'll, he'll show it. He has a nice little laptop, you know, punch it up sometimes, and he'll watch it. Okay. And, and they, they're pretty religious watchers. And they told me, and I, I gotta be honest, I was blown away that they loved it. The uh, um, women, the puck and, buddies. And, and the puck buddies and the Zamboni guys. Yeah. They absolutely said they were awesome. So let's get them back, man. All right, because I I dropped yeah, it, eh? Like I kind of well, I, I I didn't know that you dropped it. Only you know I I made some right? disparaging comments yeah. uh, about the, the, the this this bit, and because um, because I am up on a spectrum <laughs> uh, it, when it comes to hockey, right? right. Oh, well, are like, you I saying mean, that you uh, have you you only think hockey? <laughs> well, I do think about where my next point's coming from, and I right. love the ladies too. But I never would have ever, ever in a million years when you said, let's bring this in the show. If anybody was watched the show from the start, I think it's safe to say I was pretty uncomfortable. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. And I, and I said that we're, we, and, and I think that we have done it with taste. Yes, you know I, mean? I think you've done an exceptional job the times that you've rolled them out. And, and you're, it is a lot of work. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, and when what I've been doing for the trivia now is... You know, we, we continue, we always say, we solicit. If anybody right. wants to write in a question, it's pretty difficult because I'm not right in front of you. And yeah. now 90% of whatever you're asking, you can probably find online. You can so, yeah, Google, it's, Google, which Google is, by the way, significantly artificial intelligence, right? For sure, right? right? right. That's yeah. I, 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 I get that. So, you know, it was always my intention to, as I've made done several reincarnations of a podcast slash webcast right. that I had a, I, I mean, clearly Liam McGuire has to have some sort of historical component to it, you know? Yeah. So maybe the Ask Liam isn't, maybe well, we have, Ask we Liam have, should be dropped really. And not, not the, uh, not the, uh, uh, puck, puck bunnies. The puck bunnies is probably, I would hazard a guess, probably much more interesting <laughs> well, <laughs> than you know, the Ask Liam. Well, this day in hockey, I think has merit. Yeah, and you know what? To be, too, and we're just kind of we're just shooting the shit here on the show. Right. We're talking about this. I'm telling you right now, you could cover off trivia on this day in hockey. You don't even really yeah. need an ask Liam. Look, if there's an ask Liam, and there's been a couple, there's, yeah. you know, there's been a few that 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 have been mentioned on the threads. I put it on my platforms. You post it, I grab the link and I repost it because it just carries just you know it, yeah. it 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 carries more if I don't if for what I don't even know why, Chris. I can't right. explain it. You know, if I just share what you put. 
I, I extrapolate from it and I repost it. Right. And and it just seems to carry a little bit more. So. Um, well, I think a lot of times people don't. Uh, they see something go, yeah, yeah, okay, and then they scroll by. When they see a woman with large breasts, well, they click. Ninety percent of all guys. It was how many people we've had people even say, "Oh, oh I no. just clicked on it because of the picture." You know, and oh, then yeah. maybe they stayed for and listen for five minutes or something. No, you know what? No, no. Here's the thing: when people stay, yeah, they stay for a long time. Okay, like our yeah. our our analytics, yeah, okay, are really good. Like when people start watching the show, yeah, they watch for a long time. Okay. Now. I'm gonna be honest. They don't stay for the two fucking hours that we go. No, we're, which, we're, we're, we probably go too long. We I go think. too long, but yeah. you know what I mean. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. we go too long. Bring the puck bunnies back. Is my vote. All right. Well, we'll bring them back. We have and one I, week I, left I, to do it. I, we'll bring it back. Well, well then, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we're not gonna really throw away in the playoffs. I guess because the playoffs are gonna be we, so hardcore. So and, and you know what? We especially the first two rounds. That's right. So, so we're gonna we're gonna do what we can do. Maybe the third round. You know what? We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure, figure it out. out. We'll, we'll, try to, cross. we'll try to do and yeah, we'll try to yeah, we got a lot we got a lot to do. Yeah. And, and we do we still have Friday night fights to arrange too. Oh yeah. Well so there's a lot a, of stuff. That's a big one. Yeah. That's so, a big one to arrange. Um uh, okay. Yeah. So uh this week in hockey history. This week in hockey history. Okay. I got today's date, we're taping. So hold on, I'm gonna yeah. stop stop you right there. Yeah. So we're gonna get we're gonna now pretend that we're cutting to. Oh that because all of that we just talked about we'll have to you know because it's i i just put the bumper on in yeah. like seconds okay so uh i'm just gonna finish this well yeah while and we're, we're back again no no we're back again <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the uh it's editing boy it's those scissors that scissor thing we are back again from a uh, a bumper okay for the this week in hockey history Okay, and um, and today yeah. is the uh, well, this, like we're, we're in a April hateful now. day for you as a Bruin fan. Oh, is it? Oh, like, yeah, it's a bad day. Bad day for you. Bad day for me. Very bad day. Okay. Although you were young. Okay. You, you, you were, were you, what so you, you don't remember it, but what do you mean I don't? But remember? I remember okay. it vividly because from 1971. Okay, a April 8th. April 8th, 1971. April 8th. Uh, oh, I would remember it. Okay. okay. Game two, uh, Montreal, Boston quarterfinals. Bruce was this five one, and all, and then Boston lost. Lost the game, yeah. They and then the game, eventually and then lost the series. Eventually lost the series because they, they, they did not win the cup in seventy one. They won in seventy two. Seventy and seventy two. That's yeah. right. They lost to Montreal in seventy one. This was game two. It was a Thursday night. I remember it well. St. Leonard's the next day. I was probably the happiest kid in school. And the Habs are down five one. I will be honest. Andre Richard scored right at the end of the second. I remember I was watching it with my dad in our back kitchen on the cars over the first line. And uh, five two, Dad's it's over. Bruins had won game one. Yeah. Bobby Orr just looked like a god out there. Like how you was that the day he went down? No, 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 oh, okay. no. Oh no, he was in his prime, and and just absolutely killing it out there. As was Espo and everybody. They scored three hundred ninety nine goals the regular season and thirty seven team and individual records. Overwhelming favorites in the series. Lose game two. This date, nineteen seventy one, yeah. April eighth, as we're taping, and. Uh, uh, we turned over, my dad and I turned over to the Toronto series and in the Toronto series, cause we were watching Montreal and French okay. and, and the Toronto series announced that Jean Beliveau had just scored two goals in like three minutes and it was five, four. And we turned back just to see, I, I think it was Lemaire or Frank Mahal, which got the tire. Fergie, uh, scored as well. Habs ended up winning seven, five. Absolutely, we watched the rest of the game. Obviously, from the time we turned it back, there was still lots of time to go, but the Bruins were demoralized in that game and never recovered. They ended up losing the series in seven on home ice as well, even though that was early in the series. It was a real exclamation mark. So April 8th, and the only other one I got, Chris, is, um, again, I just decided for this day, I won't go too, too far ahead, but April 9th, okay. 1968, kind of neat, very historical. First ever penalty shot goal in the playoffs. Oh, really? In the NHL. In the NHL. It needs to be pointed out because the Patrick brothers, when they went out west and started the Pacific Coast Hockey Association, Pacific Coast Hockey League, Pacific Coast Hockey Association, they were the ones to put numbers on the back. They were the ones to, they, they implemented so many rule changes. And one of the rules they brought in was the penalty shot. Okay. So when the Stanley Cup winner 
from 1917-18 to 1924-25, had to play the winner of other leagues, not the Stanley Cup winner, excuse me, the NHL winner, winner right. had to play the winner of other leagues. When the games were played out west, the penalty shot was in vogue. However, that's not called NHL penalty shot playoff history. Okay. Because that was Stanley Cup playoff. Are you following? I'm following, absolutely. Okay. So Babe Die, Cecil Babe Die, is actually on record with the first Stanley Cup penalty shot sh uh, taken. Okay. Okay, in 1922. Did he score? He, he took one and he scored. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and the first one specifically in the NHL was April 9th, 1968. Wayne Connolly, a name you may remember. Okay. Played for a while, played for the Bruins, started with the Habs, signed a C form with the Habs, played a couple of games, went to the Boston Bruins, played about three years, the okay. Bruins, and the Minnesota North Stars before he went to Detroit, played about five, six hundred games in the NHL, three hundred in WHA, scored a penalty shot goal April 9th, 1968 against Terry Sawchuk. Really? And it okay. was game three of their opening series in the West, first season, 1968. They had lost the first two. They won that game. That goal chased, well, they let Sawchuk finish the period, then they pulled him. Wayne Rutledge came in, remember that name or not. But the two goalies, score ends up 7-5, the two goalies of Terry Sawchuk and Glenn Hall. I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's just history. That's dripping history to me. Yeah. April 9th, 1968, Wayne Connolly scores the first ever penalty shot goal. I thought it was very, very cool. And there's been a number of other penalty shot moments on April 9th. I could go on, but I'll leave it at that. We've gone on long enough. Far be it from us to go on. That's right. I know when I've had enough. <laughs> this isn't All right. it. All right. This has been uh, This Week in Hockey History. All right. We are back from uh, our, our, our time travel. Yeah. That was our time travel. Amazing. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Have you ever watched the way that they... And it wow. looks like we're going to watch this. We go back and eat me up, Scotty. I mean, yeah, no, no, but the bumper that I do for this. Oh, 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 oh no, no, I've seen it's it. Like it's like time travel. Yeah. And then you go through it and then you hear about, like, you know, LaFleur scoring. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I think right? it's fantastic. Yeah. So, you did a great job, man. Uh, so, I love it. so we're back from that now. Yeah. And we're in, in now present day yeah. uh, eclipse, post eclipse Ottawa. Yes. And Somehow uh, we survived. You know, knew what was going to happen. Well, you know what? There's a lot of talk about this being the end of the world and all these yeah. things. And yeah. there's a lot. I, I, one thing you realize is that there's a lot of fucking people who really need a life. I'll tell you. Well, we you know. <laughs> well, that you know. I mean, so now speaking of which, the Leafs play tonight. Do they not? Isn't it? I actually don't know the schedule tonight. I was in low Quebec for three days, and my head is not. I do not know who plays tonight. Okay. I don't know. Well, there you have it, folks. So. Liam McGuire uh, has been abducted by the Frenchies. <laughs> I actually Easy. don't know who plays tonight, but I know this uh, this week and week and a half to go. It's gonna. It always is. It's a I thing. think that tonight, and, and for some, for some reason, I believe it's Pittsburgh Leafs. Yeah. Yeah. I think go so. with it. And I and I, I I'm sure. So I'm I, I'm really hoping that Pittsburgh. Uh, well, I'd love to see Sid. I want to see this. Uh, you know, I, I want to see that big time. I want. I want my uh, preseason prediction yeah. to come true. Yeah, and then that'd be a good feather playoffs. in your cap because yeah. I wrote them off totally. Actually, I'm already eating my words. Let's be honest. I didn't expect them to be in the playoff yeah. race even a month ago. No. I didn't see it. Right. Right. I mean, there's no way. And he he is. That's why Sid, as we talked earlier, does he deserve our trophy votes? He does. Yeah. And, you know, he can make yeah. a case. Anyway, I'd love to see them in. All right. But I, I didn't think they have a chance. So that's what I'm going to be chance. doing this evening. Is that is right watching now? Pittsburgh and, and Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. that is indeed the game that I think it is. Yeah. Okay. And then hopefully I'll, I'll be happy yeah. at the end of that. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll curl up at a ball in the corner and cry. Yeah. Okay. Pittsburgh, uh, I mean, the Leafs are a better team. So, you know, go by that. <sighs> Toronto. Should I know, win. but you know what? 64 now for Matthews. The, I know, but the Leafs, uh, you know what? Again, they don't show the the depth, the grit, the... Mm, boy, I don't know. I, I, I think they've shown more to me uh, in 2024. Like in, well, yeah, in, okay, in, okay, in okay they're getting better. 
But they're not. They're, they're, I don't know. Anyways, you know what? Well, it's because they're, they're opening up against Florida or Boston, and they're going to be underdogs. So I'm, tell, I'm telling you right now, I'm cheering for the Pittsburgh Penguins this evening. Good enough. Okay. All right. Against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. And any of you Leafs fans out there. Yeah. Okay. I got. It's like the guy. Remember in uh, in um, uh, Stripes, the movie Stripes. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any of you homos. <laughs> Any of you Leaf fans, <laughs> don't touch my stuff. Okay, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just uh, yeah. you know what? And 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 listen, I'm going to say this right now. I was quoting a movie. If yeah. there are any homos out there who are offended, I did not mean anything by that at all. I was not even referring to you. I was referring to you know what I mean, Leaf fans, really. So. <laughs> And if Leaf fans are offended, fucking good for you. <laughs> uh, so, anyhow, do you think we'll get more yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he's McGuire. All right, this has been Offside with Hans McGuire. I'm Hans. I'm McGuire. G'day. They're perfect.